Sirius XM's Grateful Dead channel now brings you Tales from the Golden Road, where deadheads trade traveling tales of following the dead. So hope too many of you don't have to walk off. Or was it the dead following you? Here now are your hosts, Gary Lambert and David Gaines. Oh boy, we're back again. Which, it's been so long. Which one are you again? Uh, I forget myself. Uh, but David Gans is back after many weeks on the run. Um, yeah. I told I told right from Oakland. I told the audience last week that uh, you had been found out as Heisenberg, so you were on the. Does <laughs> <laughs> that explain why I haven't slept in three months? <laughs> I would think so. Anyway, David uh, is back at his home studio in Oakland after a very long tour, and we're glad to have him home. And, and I have to say, it was a very successful tour, and uh, and I'm happy. I met lots and lots of our listeners along the way, and I played at Addie's house. Yay! Which, except for the weather, was an absolutely glorious experience. Um, and encountered lots and lots of Tales listeners along the way, and it was really, really great to, to see them and spend time with them. And I had the most successful and satisfying and fun tour of my entire career, but it's great to be home. Well, congratulations. And I also heard glowing things about the Ashkenaz benefit the other night, the Very Jerry show with yeah. an all-star cast, including someone who's in very close proximity to you right now. That's right. We had, uh, I, I can't even, we had like 20 musicians on stage, most notably Henry Kaiser. Mm-hmm. Uh, James Nash of the Waybacks, Jeff Pearson of Further, who is sitting right next to me. We'll get to him in a minute. Uh, a terrific house band that included J. Raul Brody, who's one of the Bay Area's most um, versatile, ubiquitous, and uh, talented musicians. And it was just fantastic. Uh, Jenny Carr, do you know Jenny? I know of Jenny. I don't know her. Oh, man. She's Henry got her up there to sing Nobody's Fault But Mine in this nice swampy thing, and she just tore the place apart. And then she came up later with her husband, Phil. You might know Phil Milner. He was I do. Bobby's yes. guitar tech for yeah. a while. Um, they, they said, and, and we, you know, we, there was this flurry of email going back and forth because I was begging everybody to do something different. No Jerry Oki. I don't want anybody <laughs> up there doing like, what would Jerry do? I want everybody to put a fresh spin on things. Cool. Well, Jenny said, okay, I want to do Casey Jones as a one-chord kind of swamp boogie. Nice. And I went, okay, that should be interesting. Henry Kaiser, of all people, and Mr. Let's Do West L.A. Fadeaway in 7-4, <laughs> said, well, that's weird. Why don't we just do Unbroken Chain as a 4-4 four, four, all the way around? I was like, okay, why not? <laughs> so, But it, it turned out to be great, and then they did a sort of similarly hooker-esque treatment of I Know You Rider. Nice. And it was fantastic. But really, the showstoppers were Henry Kaiser and his group and Jeff and the Fall Risk. And I got to be their guitar player for that, so I was particularly thrilled to be in that. So let's just say hello to Jeff. Hey, Jeff. Hello, everybody. Hey, Gary. It's great How to have you, doing, you here. Man? Great to have you there. I mean, it, and here. You yeah. are here. I Cyberspace here. is where we all are. It is a beautiful thing. It's great to be with you guys. Thanks for having me on. Now, Jeff is not only one of the uh, singers in the in uh, Further, he is also the front man of a large, uh, almost <laughs> inconveniently large band called The Fall Risk. Monetarily, definitely Yeah, financially, so. <laughs> it's a, an eight-piece band is a really suicidal thing to do these days. Well, but. thank God we're down to seven. Oh, you're down to seven. Yes, okay. exactly. Yeah, that makes it. That everybody got sixteen dollars and twenty seven cents. Both last of us got rid of the same guy. Yeah. Uh -oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, we'll talk about that off right. the air. Anyway, um, yeah, he they had a very successful CD release party last night. Yes, we did. It was great. It was a great night at the Sweetwater Music Hall. Um, completely sold out. Unfortunately, they were turning people away, which I never liked to see, but we just couldn't fit any more people in the room. It's always I good hope news. you took their money anyway. We tried to take their money anyway, but they they didn't go for it, you know. <laughs> um they did let people stand out um kind of in on in the patio area that they have there and, and in the little kitchen area. I see. You should charge them 75 cents a minute for outside. Yeah, no, that would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it was, you know, Sweetwater is obviously one of my favorite places and so it was great to be there. Yeah. Well, I'm glad it went well for you. I was unable to attend for uh, personal reasons, but I knew you would do well because uh, you have a big following around here. Thank God for that. And thank God for every one of them. 
Yeah, and Harry used to. Yeah, okay, I, I am. We we don't, we've lost our visual connection, but just trust me, I'm here. And that <laughs> that show was to celebrate the release of the Fall Risks debut album, record, CD, call it whatever you want. It's called exactly. Volume Number One. That's that right. The most optimistic record title ever. Right. Well, That's yeah. why we called it that. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Because <laughs> there will be a number Looking two. Looking forward. I am me. I can't wait. I can't wait to work with these guys some more. I love them. Yeah, and uh, Jeff, you've expressed to me that you are very happy with the way this turned out. It's a great sounding recording, recorded in part at TRI Studios, was it not? That is correct. Yeah, you know, there's something to be said for connections. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, they let us uh, get in there and play around at TRI, and uh, we worked with a great producer who I've actually worked with before in my old group box set, uh, Chris Manning. Mm -hmm produced the album who uh most people will probably know uh, from being the bass player in jellyfish um which is a great band uh, back in the 90s um i just remember them for their they had weird hats they had very strange outfits yes. somebody wore a cat very San Francisco. Hat that was chris i remember that from the bammies exactly yeah that was chris wow. and his brother roger now plays with beck right. and so it was the manning brothers and a, a couple other gentlemen and uh, it was very a cool. great band so uh, it was great to work with Chris again. Uh, we did basic tracks at TRI, as Gary mentioned, and then we did uh, overdubs at Chris's studio, Salamander Sound, also in San Rafael. And You know, it took about three months to get it all done. And uh, we started out doing an EP, and then I was talking to Sam Cutler. You guys know Sam. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, one day, and, you know, I'll I'll do my best Sam imitation. He said, hey, when you talk to me, mate, do you, do you speak to me and incomplete thoughts and incomplete sentences and i said <laughs> no and he went then why do a bloody ep do a whole record get it all out there and i was like oh oh, oh yeah sam has good. a way of uh, encouraging other people to spend money <laughs> to spend they don't money. have yeah to spend bob's money back here yeah <laughs> <laughs> well i exactly. think we all oh, encourage now that. we know the yeah. secret our executive producer is sitting in the room right wow now. he follows me around to make sure he you know he's gonna get paid back <laughs> <laughs> so that song I was mentioning is a little closer to your heart exactly. than Exactly. Oh, oh, very good. <laughs> Say Bob, what are you doing after the show? <laughs> we're gonna talk about Dave we're gonna talk about David's next record. Uh -oh. <laughs> Gans, Gans is putting his shiniest lure on his fishing exactly. pole even as we see. <laughs> you should have got him a chair. I, I, I told I, you, you I, made him sit on the floor. Honey, go get me my knee pads. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm enough, trying to tell you. Enough you graft get Bob a chair. on the radio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> welcome, to the Alan, <laughs> welcome to the Alan Freed show, ladies and gentlemen. Exactly. It, this is all make believe graft. <laughs> yeah. I have. Say. Um, but listen, uh, let's reset for a moment and tell folks that this is a participatory radio show and you participate by calling 888-897-4748. I'm sure Jeff would be happy to hear from you, talk about the fall risk, talk about life in further, about running away with the circus as a grown man. Yes. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> and all kinds of other stuff. I also want to mention in our second hour, we're going to be talking to all-around impresario and swell guy Peter Shapiro of Capitol Theater, Brooklyn Bowl, Relics Magazine fame about his next big deal, which is the Interlochen Festival. At which oh, that's going to be fun. You can also see Mr. Jeff Pearson and the rest of the gang and further along with an incredible raft of people. But that'll be at about 5 p.m. Eastern time. We'll be calling Peter on the phone. In the meantime, hey, why don't we jump right into some music from The Fall Risk? I was hoping you would say that because we should get a few callers on the line yeah. at 888. 897-4748. You don't have to talk about the fall risk. You don't have to ask Jeff a question, but it would be nice if you did. But you can talk about anything you want, really. We will um, be happy to hear from you. 888-897-4748. What track shall we hear first from the fall risk's debut album, Volume 1? Well, how about the very first thing people hear when they, when they turn on the CD player or, or, or the iTunes machine or... <laughs> as, as we used to say back in the day drop the needle yeah exactly uh, l let's listen to cross my heart the first track on the album and then we'll come song. back and talk to jeff some more and we hope to talk to you as well at 888-897-4748 
from the Golden Road on Sirius XM's Grateful Dead channel. It's by Deadheads for Deadheads. Enjoy. As Rocky the Flying Squirrel used to say, that voice, where have I heard that voice? (laughs) (laughs) Watch me pull a rabbit out of my hat. That sounds good, Jeff. Yeah, sure does. Where can people find you online? At www.thefallrisk.com. Now, I I didn't understand what that... um, the name of your band meant until I was hospitalized a couple of years ago, <laughs> and I was I was I had a little little thing, mm-hmm. and uh, for a couple of days I had to take very slow laps around the uh, telemetry ward, and I kept walking by these doors that said fall risk, That's fall right. risk, fall risk. That's it. So why did you choose the name of um, for uh, infirm people? <laughs> well, basically, I mean, you're dealing with a band here of everybody's in our in, we're all in our mid forties. And, um, Shut the fuck yeah, up! Yeah, I know, right? And ha- <laughs> and having done this, uh, as if that were old. Well, you know, it's. It, I don't have to tell you this or, or Gary, but uh, it's not exactly the same as it was when we were twenty-two. It's a little yeah, harder, li- a little more sore after the show when the adrenaline goes away. Um, the feet tend to hurt the next day. You don't sleep as well because you have to get up and pee all the time. <laughs> but essentially, it, it comes from a bunch of mid forties. I hate to tell guys. you this, pal, but yes, when sir. you get to be my age, mm-hmm. it'll be worse. Yeah, I know, I know, I know what's coming, brother. And then Believe when you get me. to be Lambert's age, oh, dude, it'll what? be a freaking miracle. No, no, nobody, nobody gets to be Lambert's age. <laughs> Wait a minute, you're talking about this. 
He's taking care of his dad who's 102 years old. And his mama, I know. Yeah, yeah. I don't think we're going to be losing Lambert anytime soon. No, you're stuck so with either. me. <laughs> the yeah. jeans are good. I know. The Bergmans and Lamberts do well. <laughs> Indeed. But I just figured, you know, one of us is bound to try to jump off an amp and pull a hamstring or something right. and fall down. And so that, that, that's exactly where it came from. It's the fall wrist bracelets. And then, okay. and then you yeah. go to a Bruce Springsteen show, and he's still jumping on that damn piano at sixty three and showing us yeah, but, all up. But Bruce is in shape. He's got a personal. See, he's got a personal trainer on the road. Yeah. With him, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's true. I don't think we see Jeff pumping iron very often. I'm not pumping iron. No, I do lots of pull ups, but it's always with a, a pint of beer. <laughs> <laughs> no, the truth comes out. Oh, it's true. Well, all right. You've both hung out with me. You know it's true. Yes. Let's go to the phones. Yeah. Linda in Boston, you have a question for... Wait a minute. Why is this not working? It should be working. Are you in... All right. Hello? I clicked on it. There Hi, you. Linda. Hi, Linda. You're on the air. Oh, this is great. I'm a first-time caller. Hey. Um, kind of late... I'm kind of late to the bus. I uh, just started listening to the music about five years ago. It was an XM radio accident completely. Um, but when I heard that Jeff was on, I just wanted to give a call in because I dragged my better half to about 10 or 12 of further shows. And uh, we're always remarking we're in our mid-40s. You know, where do people get the energy? And, you know, Jeff, you always look like you're banging away up there, having a great time, you know, and the hair's flying, and it seems like the, the boys are having a good time. But how do you do it night after night? I know the next day I get up, and for a variety of reasons, you know, I just can't even complete a sentence sometimes. But it's like well, it's exhausting. So how do you, how do you keep it up? Honest. Well, that ooh, that last part. I'm not, <laughs> um. <laughs> All right, keep it clean, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Dirty minds, all of us. Um, essentially, it's it's for you guys. Um, I come out every night and look out into the audience and see so many people who are so happy to be there and so happy to experience the music. And, you know, I feel so privileged to be in that band with, with Bob and Phil, who are just absolute geniuses. Um, it's a blessing for me to be there. I feed off the energy from the crowd every night. My adrenaline gets pumping. And I got to tell you, I, I feel... You know, I weigh 250 pounds, and I feel like I weigh about 90 pounds when I'm bopping around up there. Uh, I feel weightless. Uh, I think I'm probably as euphoric as most people in the audience when I'm up there, because uh, when it comes down to it, you know, I, I do sing while I'm up there, but I also have the best seat in the house. <laughs> I'm standing. There's something about the energy on stage. There really is. When, yeah. When the people are... You know, you you do get juice from the crowd, oh and my God. from just so the much. creative flux that's happening on stage. You know, the the thing we were talking about earlier, though, it does catch up with you a couple hours after the gig, absolutely, you know, or the next morning. As soon as the adrenaline goes away, then you know, it, it, for for me especially, it's it's always my my feet are sore because, um, especially in further, you know, with the fall race, it's different because you know I get to run around and have my guitar and everything, but. With further, I essentially essentially have to sunshine, and I have to stand still. <laughs> um, you know, we we dance around, but that's a lot of There's work nowhere to go. Show. It is so. You know, at this point, we both bought chef mats. <laughs> you know, just to help the feet out oh, anywhere really? we can. Yeah, we got chef mats up there. I you got, try those those um, Vibram shoes with the toes. I they're th supposed to be great. Support. I just heard about those from our friend Chef Jeff, actually. Yeah. Um, but I I do have the uh, the Doctor Scholl's things in my tennis shoes too. <laughs> You know, Odor just eaters? from all this. No, not, no, not, I don't need those yet. <laughs> I'm sure I'm hitting well, there. I'm glad you clarified because I was wondering yeah. if you had to wear a But, exactly. but no, it's been, it's been awesome to see the shows and uh, looking forward to hearing some more of your music. But uh, I always wanted to call driving around with my mom, who I convinced that she loves the Grateful Dead. So Yay. we're listening oh, nice. away. So, so keep the tunes coming. Oh, so great to talk to you. Thanks for calling in. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Okay, let's go back to uh, David in Delaware. Hey, guys. Great show. I rarely miss it. Thanks. Thanks uh, for holding. This, this may be a good segue. Uh, I have a home care company down here in southern Delaware, and we actually help uh, seniors and disabled adults stay independent in their homes. Hey. You guys are talking about getting old. A few, uh, it's been a while, but you had Dr. Oliver Sacks on. Um, we, we did? We did. You had Dr. Oliver Sacks on. He was talking about musicophilia, his book. 
Well, not on our I, show. Maybe, maybe no. What, did, really? we, I wish. M- maybe we. I, I remember Mickey Hart talking about Doctor Sex. I think when we really? had when we we, we talked about Doctor. We Sex talked about. I love yeah. that book. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Well, you were talking about Doctor Sex, yeah. and what happened was okay. um, years ago when I was twenty years back, I read his books. Uh, he would do a lot of studies on OCD, and he was a man who mistook his wife for a hat, and the yes. boy who uh-huh. stopped washing his hands. Um, yeah. And to, um, for, for our listeners that might not know who he is, the book, the uh, movie Awakenings, was about his research into Parkinsonian. Right. Well, yeah. I have a radio program in Southern Delaware called Reflections, and we deal with senior health topics. And after I heard you guys talking about it, I went out and read that book and found it so brilliant. I found um, specific um, research of his on uh, not only Parkinson's patients, but dementia and Alzheimer's and how music brings that out and can reorient the person with dementia. Yeah. So I've actually played a couple of the clips of him talking and discussing it on our radio show, and it's had some great feedback. So I wanted to thank you because way back then you made a difference to some people Good. down here that really have gotten something out of it. And I wonder, was thank there a you. connection between the dead and Dr. Sachs? Yes. Do you remember why it came up? Oh, please, please remind me, because that's been, uh, that's been you met me. Well, I had Look for a story called The Last Hippie. Right, it's in a book called uh, An Anthropologist on Mars. Uh, I read that. That's well, well, yeah. well, that the connection between Mickey Hart and Dr. Sachs uh, came about because they were both interested in the efficacy of music in treating um, disorders specifically related to aging, things like Alzheimer's and, and yeah. Parkinson's. Yeah. And they, I can't remember exactly how they met, but there was some correspondence between them, and they both testified before Congress um, for increased funding for for programs looking into these, uh, into research and things like that. And I think it was 1990, Dr. Sachs brought a patient to a Grateful Dead show at Madison Square Garden um, as Mickey's guest and and was seated at the soundboard. And this was the patient who was the subject of The Last Hippie, of that, of that article, which was later loosely adapted into a movie called The Music Never Stopped. And... I had the privilege of being about 10 feet away from Dr. Sachs and his patient, and it was a remarkable thing. He had had this, uh, I don't know if it was a, tum- a tumor or some kind of growth on his brain that wiped out his memory of anything later than about 1970. And, wow. he, and he had been a deadhead, an early formative deadhead, but he only related to the deadhead, to the Grateful Dead, from that period and before. So... So, that again in music Ophelia, that actual story, and he does talk about that. So, if anybody's interested in how music plays that part, you and I probably don't remember much about when we were five or six years old. But yet, if you heard a song once or twice at the age of five or six, we can pretty much sing all the lyrics and even yeah. remember the tunes exactly. Yeah. Well, well, this Incredible. watching this patient respond, he he would be very very much within himself when when the Grateful Dead were playing any of their newer music. But if, if they played a song that he recognized from pre-1970, his entire affect changed. His physical engagement in the music changed, you know, and, and he started, he, he could speak more articulately about the music. It was, it was an extraordinary thing to witness. And then uh, sometime later, reading the, that piece that uh, Dr. Sachs wrote originally for the New York Review of Books and then later in, in Anthropologist on Mars was an amazing experience. And he and, he and Mickey have maintained a relationship ever since then and have worked in, uh, in that same area. Very, very cool. Well, I recommend him highly to anybody that's interested in any of that. <clears throat> and uh, thank you very much. You made a difference to some seniors down here in Southern Delaware. Excellent. Thank All you. All right. Thank you. Take care. And the number to call is 888-897-4748. This is Tales from the Golden Road on the Grateful Dead channel. And today we're visiting with Jeff Pearson, the, uh, one of the singers from Further and the front man of his own band, The Fall Risk. But you can talk about anything you want. Dave in Boston has a question for Jeff. Hey, Jeff Warren. Hey, Dave. How you doing, man? Good, man. Hey, I just want to say, great show up in New Hampshire, the two Boston shows. Fantastic. Thank and you. I know, you, you're welcome, and I know you guys just did a uh, little mini East Coast tour, but any chance of bringing the fall risk up to Boston at any time? Yes, and we were very disappointed we couldn't fit it in on this last run. We uh, we tried to get something together, but it was just... Um, 
there was an issue. We are flying out, and this festival we were supposed to play canceled. It's a long, harrowing story. I don't want to get to on the air for legal reasons. But, <laughs> um, but yes, I, I can promise you that we will definitely be coming to Boston, and it, it, and hopefully it's not going to be that much longer. We're actually thinking about. Go ahead. In, in, in the spring, or what were you thinking? The winter, or what were you planning on coming out? We're th- we're thinking about spring. Oh, great! Well, we're yeah. looking forward to it, and then can't make it up to the West Coast, but <laughs> like to check it out. Yeah, please, and and if you if you get a shot, pick up our new CD. I think you'll dig it. Absolutely, man. I'll see you. I'll see you in the spring then. All right, my friend. Thanks for the call, Dave. Sure. Thank you. All right, good. We got some more callers coming in. Let us go now to Tom driving from Peach Fest. <laughs> Pull over, please, while you're talking. <laughs> Tom. Hey guys, how are you? Okay, welcome. Good. Hey, just I apologize for the cell phone. Calling for two reasons. One, uh, I guess a lot of reasons. One, you guys have a great show. Thank you very much. It's a very enjoyable Sunday afternoon and sometimes Monday morning. Yes. Um, I just wanted to say that uh, you are such a pleasure to watch on stage. You're always so happy, especially uh, I went through many of the Capitol Theater shows, and then we had the Thursday night incident, and then I was down. I was exhausted. I was on the side of the stage at Atlantic City, and you guys just were so happy, and I was so happy. And it's great. Uh, oh, other, thank you so yeah, I was going to say, I'm driving back. I was just at the Peach Festival, and I got to see Bobby uh, at Peach Fest with Tim Ops this afternoon. And uh, Rat Dog, I went out on Friday night, got to see Rat Dog with, uh, with Tim Ops. I love Tim Ops. I love Bobby. I've seen this guy since the mid-70s. But I think uh, that combination, hopefully it's a combination we will we'll see again. Just a really seem to enjoy each other. Bobby's my favorite rhythm guitar player. I, I I really love Tim Ock as one of the few, what I believe is one of the few melodic guitar players. I love John McFerber. He's amazing. Um, and I, I know you guys were talking last week about how this man gets in a further, probably called him Dick Gary, as it's y'all do. But uh, how John is just perfect for further, which I agree with. And I think that Tim Ock is one of the few that is very scary, like very melodic, so it's just a pleasure. Great. Glad to hear it. Anyway, thanks, guys. Have a great show, and uh, thank you for everything. All right. All right. Thanks, man. Uh, yeah, I, I heard some good reports back from uh, Rat Dog Set, and the uh, the most uh, compelling uh, post I saw on Facebook was from Sharuki, who you know is a, cr- a crusty old cuss and hard to impress, and, and he posted something like, epic set from Rat Dog, so... If, I, I I saw that as well, Gary, and I, I was like, "Oh man, it must have been a smoker." If you if you please, Cherokee, you know it's it's, exactly. it's time to seek professional help. <laughs> Either that or they dose Cherokee. Oh, no, no way, <laughs> <laughs> no way. <laughs> well, okay. Uh, let's go back to the phones and Kenny in North Carolina. What's on your mind today? Hey, I just want to talk about some interlocking, man. We're all excited about this festival coming up, this first time festival. Yeah. And I'm wondering, you know, what what might we have in store? I mean, we got four four sets of further coming up. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna get we're gonna get more details on that in our second hour from Peter Shapiro, who is the impresario behind it, or one of the two impresarios behind it, along with Dave Fry. But uh, well, I just kind of want to holler at Jeff and tell him, you know, I'm bringing my daughter up for her 16th birthday party. Right. You know, oh, and I'm nice. bringing a, a third generation, you know, deadhead along. <laughs> And I was just trying to get my heads up, man. Maybe we can give her a little shout out. <laughs> That's wonderful. Happy birthday to her. Yes, and we'll be there. We'll be there September 10th. That's her birthday. And we'll be looking forward to it. And I just wanted to, I just got real excited when you all were talking about interlogging. All right, we're, we're looking, looking forward, forward to, to it. I'm, I'm hoping to make it there. I'm, I'm still, uh, my plans are still up in the air, but I'm going to try to move heaven and earth and be there. Well, I appreciate it. We'll be looking forward to it. All right. right, Take care, Kenny. Thank you so much, brother. And uh, Jeff in New York, finding love on the road. Ooh. Yeah, how you doing? This is Jeff in New York. Hey, now. Hey, Jeff. Hey, Jeff. 
Hey, so I've been traveling with the dead, you know, for a long time, and uh, I always had love everywhere around me, whether it was my friends or people we were traveling with or staying with, but truly found love multiple times on the road. The first uh, first time I was out on, in California seeing the Oakland Mardi Gras shows, uh, I was actually there with a group of friends. We wound up meeting up with some folks, staying the night in Marin County. Next day, I was traveling out to go back to Arizona, and I met this girl in the airport dropping off one of her friends, and it was probably the only time in my life that was love at first sight. Mm. And it was through the Grateful Dead. I mean, it was one of those moments out of a movie. Never happened before, never happened again. Locked eyes. It only has to happen once, man. <laughs> that, that's it. That's it, man. It was, it was enough to last me for a lifetime, that's for sure. There you go. And uh, did you marry that girl? You know what? I came pretty close, but I was uh, I was a little too young at the time to be thinking about marriage. But we did about everything else that you can uh, can do in love. I want to leave. TMI, dude. TMI. Yeah, exactly. Right <laughs> there in the airport show. bathroom. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I wound up, you know, dropping everything. I, I stayed out in California, lived there for four years with her, her family, and just led to a whole other experience and chapter of my life. Um, and then, you know, the, the second time, not only, I mean, the shows are just a, a, a hub of love. It's kind of like a nexus and you see people, you, you spread love, you spread happiness to everybody. You pass people in the halls and outside and everybody's just so loving. But I actually met another girl several years later outside in the parking lot, eating barbecue and after the show, doing what that had to do. And, uh, we wound up leaving camping out for the next three days and that was just another one of those experiences where the first night we instantly fell in love with each other and had made plans to uh to get together and and had stayed together for years and years after that of course you know life takes its turns but some of the moments that i'm grateful for that i'll forever have in my moment in my uh, memories and something that i think is definitely could could not have happened without the whole experience and ambiance of of the Grateful Dead. Absolutely, I I fell in love at many a show. <laughs> getting getting reciprocity was another story, but <laughs> <laughs> that's how I, that's how I met my fiance. Oh, there you go. Who's who's there here tonight? Go. When when Gary's not dating her, she's she's planning <laughs> on marrying me. <laughs> <laughs> Every time Further's in New York, I run off to sound check and I call my fiance. I say, where are you, honey? She's I'm with Gary. We're at a museum. Oh. <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs> yeah, yep. It's just, it's just uh, shared cultural affinities. That's what, what a good, what a good friend. <laughs> I'm just looking, I'm just looking out for her in the big city while Jeff's busy with that, other things. That's right. That and is I'll tell very, you, very, very good I'll, of you. <laughs> I'll tell you what, man, you, you got good taste. If I saw a girl eating barbecue, I think I might. <laughs> Right. They're, they're, what is what is what is the what is that captivating scent you're wearing? Mm, yeah, yeah. Barbecue sauce. Mm. Somehow sauce. I don't think a kale and beet smoothie is quite the yeah. impression that a plate of barbecue. <laughs> that is. doesn't do it for me, man. <laughs> Might live a little longer, but <laughs> but, miss, but why? I still miss the I still miss the chow mein, man. Back when I was going to dead shows, yeah. oh yeah. Days, man, the you chow know, mein time, guy at the Kaiser was the best. I, I do remember that guy. But one time, I I was running out of the Oakland Coliseum. You know, they they it was an encore. Just you right. know, I don't want to hear this. I'm going to get out of here and beat the traffic out of the parking lot. <laughs> I ran out the back of the Coliseum to the parking lot. And I almost ran smack into this guy. The door to this van bursts open, and this guy jumps out with a big steaming plate of grilled cheese sandwiches. Uh, and yeah. I almost knocked him over. Uh, How much? <laughs> a I'll dollar. I handed him all. I only bought one, but it was just the perfect thing for that moment. Man, a steaming hot grilled oh, cheese man. sandwich. It well, you was remember like the Wonder che- Bread and American exactly. cheese for fuck's sake? Uh-huh. But it was just perfect. It's the perfect thing at the time. You remember the Chow Mein guy? I do. Mm-hmm. You come out the doors of the Kaiser. After a show back in the day, and he was set up right out, right at the bottom of the steps, right in the park, mm-hmm. and the line was so long always, but it was worth the wait. I miss him. Yes, indeed. I, I haven't was, seen I that guy more, at a further show yet. I was more of a yet. fan of the uh, the egg roll lady. Oh, the egg rolls. Yeah, the egg roll lady. Barrel was great. Of, of boiling oil in the back of her van. That's right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oil <laughs> drum. Have, count the count the code violations. Yeah. Seriously. <laughs> 
Listen, ah, nothing says love more than memories. sandals and a uh, parking lot my, hookup. Yes, my indeed. cardiologist <laughs> remembers that guy, too. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Remember when I could eat that stuff? Those mm-hmm. were the days. <laughs> well, all right, man. Thank you for your tales of finding love on the road. Yeah, we got to do another one next week for uh, finding tales of food on the road. Yes. Uh, yeah, right. We're, you, you know, we, we're, the love uh, of food. We, we can't confirm it yet, but uh, we, we are hoping to do a show on uh, on food and the Grateful Dead with a very special guest uh, sometime this fall. We're, uh, But I, I, I can't give yeah, details. Yeah, don't jinx it, man. But, don't but give it away. We're working on it. Nice. They're going to have right, uh, vegan you. vegan egg roll uh, recipes. Oh, no. Bite your tongue. <laughs> <laughs> um, but seriously, you can call and talk about food in the Grateful Dead this week too. There's yeah. no reason you can't. Just because Jeff, Jeff Jeff likes food, oh, I'm man. here to tell you. Look at me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm kidding. So we'd be happy to talk about food. Thank you, caller. Thank you, guys. Have a great day. Great to hear from you. And speaking of food, I have to put in a plug for the show I'm playing this afternoon. As soon as I get off the air here, I'm running over to Chef Jeff's house, <laughs> Chef, uh, oh, Club oh, Club sure. Avenue Nine. And I'm doing what we call dinner and a show. Jeff is a spectacular, talented chef. He is. Jeff Rosen. And he used to have a place called uh, Club Avenue 9 over in the the, um, Sunset District of uh, San Francisco. And now he lives over near me here in Oakland. And we're doing a show called Dinner and a Show today. It starts at 3.30. And he's over there cooking right now. Yeah, I've I've done done them too before. And he puts on the spectacular meal. He sure does. And then I play a set. And then we have dessert. Yep. And it's going to be fun. Now he has a restaurant it's called Poulet now. Well, he just yeah. took over just as took the over chef of Poulet. Yeah, Poulet. And, and they provided Poulet uh, on the, in the gourmet ghetto of uh, North Berkeley, right yep. down the street from Chez Panisse. And Jeff, uh, Chef Jeff brought us great treats so from Poulet good. for the backstage oh, that snacks. Was good. And that accounts for the excellent music the other night. We were all so happy That's right. with the food we were fed. <laughs> uh, and in a lovely bit of synchronicity, I just got texts from our mutual friend and Wavy Gravy documentarian Michelle Ezrick informing ah. me that she's on her way to our favorite barbecue joint in New York, Mighty Quinn's, and she wanted to know if I wanted to join her after the show. But alas, I cannot. Look at that. He's getting, only prop- we he's getting F- propositions while he's working. If on only screen. we could FTP barbecue through the line. That would be nice. <laughs> that's great. twice barbecues come up. And speaking oh. of Poulet, Wavy does go in there just about every week to buy. Yeah, he lives just a few blocks away. Yeah. That's right. Mm-hmm. Poulet is an excellent restaurant yes. in North Berkeley. Uh, let's talk to our good friend, <laughs> Hippie Jeff. Hi, Jeff. Hello, guys. In Salt Lake City. Hello, Hippie Jeff. I want to say hi to Jeff Pearson because I haven't talked to you forever since the last time you played the Zephyr. Oh my God! In you the remember box set who days. I am? I, I'm going to show you a picture of him in a second, okay, Jeff. Do you talking. have a picture? <laughs> I do because I met him in June. Oh, okay. Show me a picture. Yeah, George's friend, George, that passed away when you were oh. playing with box set. I used to speak. Wow. I, in fact, the last time you guys played there, we helped load out your equipment. Oh, well, God, thank you for that. <laughs> I, I know we appreciated that so much. <laughs> thank you, Jeff. Yeah, yeah I, but I... Oh, there you are. Yeah, I completely remember you. Dave just put up a picture of you. Yeah, yeah, because, yeah, I met him in June. So, yeah, it was... Uh, I've been painting, and then... then Unforgettable. I, I turned on, huh? And uh, turned on uh, late today, and I was painting the neighbor's house next door. So I'm glad I caught you. I forgot you were going to be on this week. Absolutely, I'm glad you called in, man. How have you been? I've been hang. I'm still stuck in air. Got a little <laughs> bit of. Lar- I got a little bit of laryngitis. With there's a bug going around here in Salt Lake, plus with all the fires, and. Uh, I screamed pretty loud last Saturday at Steely Dam, which was killer. They were tired. Oh, nice! Thousand nut nat asses. <laughs> hey, My hey, first. Hey, Je- hey Jeff. Yeah. Ask, the, the Zephyr is no longer there, right? Is that gone? The building is, but it's been sitting empty. Really? For all That's the, too bad. For, for all this time, I think since like 2003 or so, I can't remember. Might have been a little 2003, 2005. Yeah, it's just sitting there, empty, and that's when they built the depot here because uh, it was okay. going to be a house of blues. And so, wow. Well, that yeah. would be nice. Yeah, Salt Lake would be a house of blues. Yeah, but no, the depot's really nice, too. It's got state-of-the-art facility. Mickey played there. I saw Mickey play there uh, oh, great. last March. 
Yeah, I was, I was so, surprised. Is that for clothes? That was a really nice club. It was wasn't beautiful. that fun? Wasn't great that great sound it, system? As I recall, I remember. Yeah, and just intimate, and just an intimate venue. Yeah, it was, and I, I I remember the first time I ever played there. It was box set and leftover salmon. It was just a. That's the first time I saw night. both. That's the both the first time I saw both of you guys. Both of the, I saw both shows. Yeah, but we, that's right. We did two nights. That was that was a great great tour. We had so yeah, fun, Friday so. Saturday. That was the first time I got met all of you guys was on that tour. <laughs> yeah, and then we came back a, a whole bunch of times. And that's right. They used to put you up at that uh, that old hotel, the Deseret. And I'll never forget that place. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> that, yeah. I party with Commander Cody there actually after a after a. Uh, uh, that so explains why he looks the way he looks. Exactly. It's Commander <laughs> Cody. Two triple cheese side order of fries. Partied with, partied with Commander Cody and lived to tell the tale. <laughs> exactly. And, and no, I ain't that, never had too much fun. <laughs> no, never. It, 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 it was his vegetation that he always brought to the after party. Off his yes. Farm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, we used. To, so, yeah, I remember that. We used to go to the that place around the corner and like that sit up until four for food afterwards. Anchors away, I think it was called. And, yeah, that's still there. Yeah. I'll bet it is. Yeah, it's always fun. You always had to show your ID to get in anywhere in Salt Lake City. <laughs> I know. Well, they yeah, you still do, but a, they changed they changed the private club law finally, though. Oh, thank goodness! That was yeah. That wasn't was, that That stupid? had to be annoying for you guys. Well, it had to be annoying for you for people there for sure. Well, when I was in Kansas City and I came back, they they got rid of the brown bag law. You used to be able to bring your bottle in, mark it, and set it at the bar, mm-hmm. and just order mixers. <laughs> oh wow! Well, back in that back in the eighties, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then I came back in ninety, and they changed mm-hmm. the law. I came back from my sister's wedding, and they changed the law. So I was bummed. <laughs> Yeah, well, they don't worry. They replace it where now you can bring your gun in instead. So. <laughs> I've never owned one in my life. Yeah, yeah. I know. It's, it's He's that, a hippie, for God's oh, sake. Oh, yeah, I don't own one either, Jeff. Let me tell you, it just seems to be the way things are going, yeah. unfortunately. Oh, I know. Let's go, go politics. Well, the no. Steve, well, we'll go briefly politics because at the Steely Dan show, I was sitting, I ended up sitting next to Mayor Becker of Salt Lake and his wife. Really? Well, and we had some nice. good, good, we had some good democratic uh, discussions, and he gave me some names for because I don't know what I'm going to do for the winter because I do out painting outdoors and landscaping, and so uh, he gave me some names. Uh, I asked him about working for the Democratic Party, and he said, "Yeah, uh, get a hold of this guy." <laughs> cool, great. There for, you go for, for winter. So yeah, so that's. Uh, <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. But you remember George, right? Big George? Yes, I do. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, God bless him, man. I miss George. No, oh, I'm I'm sad to hear he's gone. Yeah, that was 99, I believe. Oh, yeah. So, well, yeah. well, I'll let somebody else get in. And so good to talk to you. David, you still have my uh, email, right? Yes, I do. Okay, would you give it to Jeff so I can get in touch with him and then we can get on the Facebook deal? So that would be great if you could. Yeah, do you that. can find you can definitely find me on Facebook, my friend, and you can find the fall risk there too. Oh, okay. All right, yeah. Cause I really so like please do. Are, are you going to be coming to Salt Lake with a new band? Oh, we definitely will, and it sounds like the the depot's the place to go, huh? Oh, it's uh, the, the video screens and the sound in there is excellent, man. Yeah, I saw Wonderful. I saw Rat video Dog screens. Here. Yeah, bunch of them. As long as they don't have basketball games on while we're trying to play the gig. <laughs> <laughs> no, they turn, they turn the games off when the band starts. But <laughs> and, and, they, and, they'll, and but they, but they'll have the ones closer to the bar, like during the World Series. They'll leave those on. Yeah. <laughs> You don't want a gig during the World Series, anyway. No, no, you. <laughs> well, no, I saw. Who did I see during the? I saw. Um, I think it was Warren Haynes, 
or Dark Star during the World Series a couple of years ago. I think it was Warren Haynes' band. Mm-hmm. And my, when, when my Cardinals were playing in the World yeah, two years ago when they were playing in the World Series, when the Cards won it in the seventh game. <laughs> yeah, I remember I remember Bob Weir announcing that the Oakland A's had won the World Series from the stage of Winterland during that 74 run. Mm-hmm. <laughs> really? Yeah. I wish I remembered that. Three in a row, the A's got... You know, I, I, A's they, the Dead held their second set one time because Ramrod was watching the Celtics. Yeah. Oh, uh, really? Remember that? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I can tell you, Further has gone on late a few times because yeah. Bob, and, Bob and I have been watching it in one game or another. <laughs> That's well, you heard it here, kids. Quite a bit. Next time when you I think these people <laughs> love you, remember what he just said. No, we we we, we make what it up. They deliver the goods. It doesn't it doesn't change the amount of time they play. You know, it's all right. Listen, I'm gonna be real brief with that day, but I, I when I was I was head cook swing shift at, in Kansas City at Pizza Hut, and Bob and Jerry were on a Monday night rock and roll show interview show, and the guy wanted to talk rock and roll, and Bob Weir said, "Hey, can we talk football? The Forty ers are playing tonight <laughs> on Monday night on Monday night football." Yeah. Bob's a big Niner fan. Yeah, that is so weird, man. I got into music because it did not involve winners and losers and standings and all that. <laughs> oh, shit. sure. All does. my favorite musicians <laughs> turn out to be sports geeks. It's true. Yeah. It's what true. is up with that? I don't get it. Think, anyway, Jeff, we got to move on. Thanks for calling, man. Oh, no, Thanks, yeah, Jeff. Okay. Nice Take care, buddy. You, brother. Okay, okay, bye. Bye bye. See you soon. Okay, 888. Yeah. 888- Eight nine seven four seven four eight is the number. We got a couple of lines open. Chris Lipper posted on Facebook on our Tales from the Golden Road page. I posted a photo of Jeff sitting right here next to me. Too too close for comfort, really. <laughs> but he posted, "We saw Fall Risk at a Bears picnic and surprise of the summer. Oh. They are great. Go see them." Fun as hell. Well, thank you, Chris. So aside from the fact that he was surprised you were any good, it was a very positive point. <laughs> so let's get some calls on the line at 888-897-4748. Gary, why don't we listen to another track from the Fall Risk record? Uh, yeah, well, I was actually going to hold off on doing that bef- until just before we called Pete Shapiro, but let's take, okay, these, let's let's take these couple more calls and encourage more people to call at 888-897-4748. All right, Sarah in San Francisco. Gary, why don't we... Turn down Turn your radio. radio. Turn on your radio and listen to us. I, I got you. Hey, Sarah. Okay, good. Hey, this is Sarah. I'm calling from San Francisco. And we Jeff, you that. guys were great. Oh, thank hello? you, Sarah. You were... Hello, Sarah? Hi. Yeah, um, <laughs> actually, we were at Sweetwater last night, and we heard the fall risk and also Josh McIntosh coming on, and it was really nice to see that opening band, a local band, coming on. You guys sounded fabulous. The CD was great. I really love the fact that you did the meet and greet. And FYI... Um, my boyfriend, Rob, was Mark Abbott's roommate a while back, and he's the one that gave you those wristbands to say fall risk. <laughs> oh, yeah, I wore one on stage last night. That was great. Yeah, Thank you. Have, yeah, for sure. I'm just curious if you guys are going to be doing a local tour and when the next time is that you're going to be playing locally. And is it possible also you're going to be including some younger local bands? There's a lot of new talent also coming in on the scene. Are you guys into that? Oh, absolutely! I'm al- I'm always interested in, in in finding some some new music to uh, to put on as an opener. Absolutely, um, Josh. Can I recommend like... one. <laughs> oh, sure. Go ahead. Okay, so um, so I'm a native San Franciscan. I've been around the music scene um, from Grace and Janice were people that I knew back in the day and wow. um, took photos of Winterland when it was coming down and stuff. But there's um, I've been a registrar at the Community Music Center for a good 16 years. There's, there are so many new young bands coming out, but one I'd really like to suggest to you guys is called The Blind Willies. I've seen Sublime that. Do you know Willies. them at all? Okay. I've seen that name around, yeah. And they would fit in so well with you, and they're all young people. They all come from musical families. They're all pretty much from the Mission District in San Francisco, um, okay. and they play like local acoustic places like Bazaar Cafe, and they, I think they actually did the Yuba oh. Garden. But I, love I would the really Bizarre love Cafe. to see for sure, and I'd love to see um, the Fall Risk also just be such an inclusive group in the Bay Area because you guys do lead, you know. You're, and I love the fact that you did some covers. Dead Flowers was fabulous last night. Oh, um, thank you. And, and I love the fact that you ended with Teddy. She's so heavy. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, that's that's a fun song to play. It's a fun song to sing and actually put my guitar down and just, you know, get up and grab the mic and you know, play the part. It was a lot of fun. Definitely. And do you have any sort of advice you'd like to give to some young musicians that I can pass on? 
You know what? The only piece of advice, you know, obviously a lot of us get that question a lot. The only piece of advice, it, because it, it really does, there is a lot of luck involved, um, is take every single gig you can possibly get until you can afford to be choosy. <laughs> um, yeah. And this is the truth. I mean, take anything. Take a backyard barbecue, take a cafe, take anything you can possibly yeah, get. Yeah, just play, 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 play. play. Because there's nothing that's going to teach you more than playing live. You can rehearse all you want, but you really don't start learning things until you get in front of people. And when you're playing out, it also you never know who you're going to meet and what kind of connections you're going to make through getting your face out there in public. Someone cool might hear you or it might turn you on to other possible collaborations or co-bills. Yeah, get out there and work it. Yeah. And something and else, too, I learned this. I, I also learned this from, uh, the, from Ted Templeman, who was the producer of the Doobie Brothers and uh, Van Halen Van and a Halen. bunch of other, yeah. Nicolette sure. Larson. He said he saw... Van, he first saw Van Halen at Gazzari's on, 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 on the strip in on L.A., the strip, and they were exactly. playing for like four people, he said, but they poured it on like they were playing a sold-out show at the Forum, yeah, and that's, that's what I it. always do. Every gig you ever play, give it everything you got, because the four people that are there are going to leave that place and go, you should have been there. That's right. And because I played yeah. all, those, all those years at, at being a part of box set, that's how I ended up in further, and things just steamroll sometimes. For sure, and, and I have gone out for box set too. Just another quick question: Do you think it's easier now with the internet and Facebook and YouTube and all this stuff for musicians, or do you think that makes it harder? Uh, you know, I don't. Honestly, I don't think it makes it easier. I mean, I suppose it's easier, you know, to say, you know, to put a record out and everything because of the home recording. But it, there's so much stuff on the internet and everything. It, it's, it's, yeah, it's, I think then it's you gotta just as get, hard to get away. Following. You have to figure out how to rise up above the... I, I had an exchange with exactly. Peter Case. Mm -hmm. He posted a couple of years ago, he posted on Facebook, I'm starting a label. And I wrote to him, I said, Peter, pretty soon it's going to be one man, one label. And yeah. he said, yeah, it's like the fall <laughs> yeah, of the exactly. Soviet Union. He said, it's true. the playing field is completely level. Absolutely. But along with that, yeah. it means that the ceiling has come down so low you know, that a guy like me can consider himself successful right. because there isn't that much money to be made in the business anymore unless you're, you know, Lady Gaga or whatever. Exactly. Yeah, I so agree. it's it's really hard. You have to figure out a way to differentiate yourself from the crowd. But really just go out there and be your best self and be yourself for God's sake. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, Definitely. don't try and sound Definitely. like somebody else. That's it. And right. Sarah, we're going to be at Ashkenaz on November 2nd. That's the next Bay Area. Oh, are you really? Like, spread the void. Oh, spread the void. <laughs> November 2nd in Ashkenaz. Okay, great. Great. Thank you so much. Sure. Thank you, so Thank you for calling. Take care. Hey, David, sure. before we go to the next caller, I just, yeah. I just want to say that point you made about artists giving giving their all no matter how few people are in the club. And uh, the previous caller mentioned Commander Cody. The first time I saw Commander Cody and The Last Planet Air Man, they were so unknown on the East Coast. Uh, Lost in the Ozone had just come out but had gotten no traction. They played like a rec room at CW Post College on Long Island. Wow. And, and I would say the crowd peaked at about 15 people and dwindled to about eight. But Billy C. Farlow could have been, you know, Elvis playing the International Hotel in Vegas, man. He was such a showman and, you know, just dripping sweat by the end of the show and acting like he was just playing the biggest room in the world and i fell in love with that band that night because of that that's what you do yep it's you know if, there's no such thing as a bad gig as far as i'm concerned <laughs> that's true all right we got phone lines open at 888-897-4748 and stewart in toronto has been holding for quite a while stewart from toronto you must be in the bay area hi guys how are you hey stewart Good. Uh, I just have a question um, about Jerry Garcia's guitar playing on Teach Your Children. And I, was wondering if it was the, I was wondering if it was the same session that he did um, Crosby's um, Almost Forgot My Name. I might be no, no, no. Those were recorded at different times in the same place. Stephen Barncard was the engineer on both things, but Jerry's, uh, Jerry's pedal steel line on... Uh, Teacher Children was done as an overdub after the recording was already made, and I think it was recorded in the same place, but at different times. Okay, so I just that's what I thought, but I just um, I'm not wanting to dispute you, but I'm just was reading in um, <clears throat> Neil Young's Waging Heavy Peace. He says he remembers the uh, recording session vividly uh, with Teacher Children. He said Jerry came in and played a steel guitar part on it. It was actually a regular guitar 
with a slide, as I remember. That is wrong. No. That is wrong. Neil is wrong. Okay. And actually, okay. Stephen Barncard Stephen Barncard remarked on that. Uh, if, oh, if really? Somebody, yeah, somebody was actually there. Said no, Neil wasn't there. That was Neil wasn't there when <laughs> the overdub, the pedal steel overdub, and it was very clearly a pedal steel. It is not. Jerry playing slide guitar. You couldn't do that. Okay, that's, what always, guitar, that's what I always thought. Yeah, still, yeah. So, yes. But it's funny how he processed it by saying, I vividly remember that stuff. Well, th that's, yeah, just, well that's just Neil proving that he was there in the 1960s. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and a quick uh, Sorry, quick, Neil. We love uh, you, buddy, but you're full of shit on this one. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we can tell him that answer logging, too. I was wondering yeah, if you, further uh, is coming I'll anywhere. I'll make sure there's a film north. crew when you go tell him that, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> what was that, Stuart? I was wondering if Phil, uh, further was coming anywhere in the northern regions, either Buffalo or Canada, by any chance. Jeff is Jeff is not allowed to tell. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's actually true. <laughs> yeah, until um, until dates are officially announced, they keep it. Yeah. Under, okay. uh, although you got to keep it under wraps, buddy. We do have uh, in in the. But I, I'll tell you what. I'll steal Jeff's iPhone and look on his calendar, <laughs> and okay. then I'll mail it back to him later. <laughs> But, okay, so Neil's full of shit. I got it. <laughs> yeah, but but yeah, the, that's your takeaway from this conversation. Yeah. The, the good, it's, the, still, it's still a good book, though. <laughs> the good news about further is that dates in 2014 have been announced, but they're in the opposite direction in Mexico. They're in Mexico. Uh, maybe I should take a trip. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, that's a good guys, place thanks, to do job. it. All right. Thank you for calling. Bye -bye. So Bye. let's let's play that. Let's uh, now that we uh, we have taken some calls. Let's play that second track from the Fall Risk. And then when we come back on the other side, uh, Pete Shapiro will join us, and we can and we'll keep Jeff here. Yeah. Is this uh, is uh, is this Angeline? We're gonna hear. Let's play Angeline. All right. Great. Okay. Let's... This is the Fall Risk from Volume Number One of Many. In enjoy. All right.
pray the river rolls on Angeline And when my memory yearns And the smokestack burns I feel the pedal wheel turn Angeline No, no, no Queen of Coca-Cola Crosby played on that track. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that had Jason Crosby on it, didn't it? That's right. Jason Crosby played fiddle on that for me. And he sat in with us last night. And man, oh, isn't he great? What a blast. I mean, it was it was just great jamming with him last night. He's, he's an incredible talent. Well, um, in case you're just joining us, that was Angeline by The Fall Risk, uh, which is... The band led and uh, the principal songwriter of which is Jeff Pearson, our good pal from Further. Hello. And speaking of Further, they're going to be playing at a little shindig down in Virginia next month called Interlocking. And funny we should mention it because on the phone with us is one of the principal driving forces behind that, our friend, impresario, publisher, man about town, and all around cool guy, Peter Shapiro. Pete, welcome. I'm in mean, driver of an Audi car right now. Oh, uh, but, but good to be, but good to be, and proud host hey, of having, proud host of having the Fall Risk play uh, my venue about a week or two ago at Brooklyn right. Bowl. That's Great right. band. I am good to That's be Pete. here. Thanks, Thanks for having man. me. And I was, by the way, it was hard. I was about to chime in when you brought up Jason Crosby there before because. Uh, He's a good man and a, and, a, and a great player and a great talent on that fiddle. And uh, I was holding back <laughs> there when you were talking about Jason. I wanted to chime in, but I realized <laughs> that would have thrown some people off to have a third voice to pop in from God. Right, until you'd been properly introduced. Third now, voice, please. But I, who's counting? <laughs> yeah, that's the, the, say hello to David Gans <laughs> as well, Peter. <laughs> uh, I, in fact, I, I first became uh, familiar with Jason. Hi, Pete. I first became familiar Pete, with Jason Pete. at the Brooklyn Bowl. Um, he was a regular there, sitting in with just about everybody I went to see there. And uh, then we lost him to the West Coast. He seems pretty happy about oh, it. Still... In David's neck of the woods, and uh, luckily got yeah. to have you. And uh, but Jason, when I've seen him recently, I mean, he's got that huge grin and that <laughs> smile. And I yeah, think spending time at Terrapin and spending time with Weir. He's just, you know, living a dream. He's a, he seems like a really happy person. And uh, it's tempting when you meet these West Coast Bay Area people. You know, it's, it's, you think New York's good or the East Coast is good until you meet them. And they just, they just look happier. Well, you know, I... I uh... <laughs> well, that's why we're trying Virginia. I... You know, we thought Virginia, at least it's westward from the uh, from New York. <laughs> <laughs> that's true so so speaking of living the dream uh it looks like you've got a dream event coming up in september it is you know when you're in the middle of the dream <laughs> you start to, you're not sure if it's a dream or not and sometimes it's, it's hard to remember how great it's you know the good stuff when you're in the middle of it because just you know today we're dealing with um you know, just the little things that come about that are that are a result of, of of the good stuff, right? When you get sometimes you get what you ask for, and we have this such amount of oh, such such great stuff coming, we we don't want to screw it up, right? So we want to make sure we nail it, and uh, you know, having Neil Young and Fogarty and the Crows and Zach Brown playing with String Cheese, and obviously further for three nights, and we can go and now Jimmy Cliff, and we got some news of a new act that we're going to announce, or I can announce here when we're ready. Okay. You know, so it's just it's making sure we just get it right, and um, and I take that you know that's a serious responsibility when you have all these people in one place especially a camping music festival in a, in a location like this, where I think a lot of people we're seeing coming from all over the country. We know from where the tickets have been bought. 
So we want to we want to do it in the right style, like maybe like, and that's why it's appropriate to be on this 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 station because we want to do it like you know like they used to do it in Eugene. <laughs> yeah. Ah. Well, y- you know what you're talking about being in the middle of the process of making one of these things happen when you go to an event that's beautiful and seamless and wonderful and a great time is had by all and everybody is safe and happy and there are enough porta johns and all that stuff that makes a concert work you know the people who go there just take it for granted wow this thing just happened but the amount of planning the the months to years that it can take to make something like this happen and get all the permits and deal with the community that you're going into, that you're kind of uh, benignly invading. It's a tremendous amount of work, and when people do it well, it's uh, it's something really admirable, and I, I my hat's off to you for doing it. Thanks. No, it's... Uh... <laughs> Sometimes you know you ask yourself, "Well, wait a minute, what, what what are we what are we doing here? What am I what did I opt into?" <laughs> but it's so it's so cool to see so many people, you know, helping, yeah. being a part of it. Some, yeah, are employees and paid, and it's their job. Many others wanting just to support, and and even the people that are, you know, getting paid to do a job, they go above and beyond. And the coordination that does need to happen, and especially in a first year event in a location that's never really hosted something like this, um, both, both just the land, but also the area, you know, and, and to have a, a festival that could become an annual thing and in central Virginia in this beautiful area of Nelson County, um, you know, it'd be such a great thing. Uh, right now it doesn't seem to be, right, a big music camping festival of this size in that area. There's some other cool stuff at Festy, and obviously there's some festival kind of things at Meriwether, which is a great venue, but we're hoping to do something, you know, at a bigger scale, not too big. You know, we're not going that 50, 60, 70,000, you know, and I love Bonnaroo. I've been to my every Bonnaroo, and I love it, but this is meant to be a little bit different. And so we're trying to see if we can keep that intimacy um, and that vibe while also enabling people to come, you know, at a bigger level with bands like Further for Three Nights, like Neil Young, like, you know, the widespread Fogarty combo and doing some of those combinations that I love doing you can do in, in clubs and that did it. Widespread jam. Fogarty. <laughs> I like it. Do you like that one, dude? Yeah. We, we, yeah. Well, we feel, you I know, like that. it comes from us. Uh, Dave Fry is my partner who started the Horde tour. Um, and so we, he started Horde and my background with wetlands and jammies and just growing up in the scene and, and learning from, you know, just putting on shows and put, watching people collaborate and growing up loving the Grateful Dead. You know, it's, we just wanted to continue that tradition. Um, and, you know, actually, I read an interview with David, actually, recently, where you talked about, I think, in 2005, you were watching, I think, Railroad Earth, you were saying, and you saw that moment where, where, where it's just very rare that you can see musicians really lock in and then did and, and collaborating and of the moment and improvisating, real improvisation. Oh, you must, you must be reading, you must be reading Peter Connor's book. Yeah, I just looked at it and I read that spot and you had a good point. I just read that, happened to have just read that, but we're going to hope to create some of those moments, right? Sometimes they don't work. We're hoping it works because it won't be, you know, there's going to be a lot of people watching. And the other cool thing I think we've done is like, because you go to these big festivals and sometimes there's four or five stages of music simultaneously and you have to pick, well, I kind of yeah. wanted to see Wilco, but you know, my morning jacket's over here or this band's there, you mm-hmm. know. So we're going to just have one music, one stage playing at a time, one band at a time. Now, as soon as they're done, we have a second stage that's right next to each other, and then that stage will kick in immediately. And then when that stage is done, the other one kicks in immediately. So we're going to try and have this fluid day of music where it's nonstop, but nothing else going on. And so, like, we're going to have a cinema tent, but during the day, there's no sound from the films. There'll be silent films. Dean Putnick's actually programming it, <laughs> and the audio for the, the awesome. movies will be from the stage. And so, we, you know, so we, we have a little bit of a take on this thing, and, you know, we got our fingers crossed that it works. Yes. <laughs> and, yeah, one of the things I really like sounds about great, the, man. The, just de- sounds great. the design of the festival, having artists play multiple days and overlap with other artists, and you're encouraging these collaborations. And, and Peter, one of the first times I really became aware of your work was uh, as producer of the jammies and you came up with some really wonderful collaborations. I'll never forget seeing Bella Fleck and the Flecktones with McCoy Tyner and the great tap dancer Savion Glover one year. 
and, yep. and uh, Peter Frampton with Guster. And uh, th- there have been some really cool things, you know, at, at the jammies. And this seems to be, you know, a, a continuation of that philosophical well, you know, direction. Well, uh, that'll lead into our, our uh, the announcement or whatever. You know, I just want to tell everyone we're going to we've been adding some acts. We have one more. You know, this will probably be the last one announced, but we're really excited to, uh, to announce that Grace Potter is going to come join, and she's going to do it in that same spirit. She's not coming with the band. She's got a gig, right. but she's freeing up, and she's going to come to guest on the uh, on the Thursday. We, all, the other cool thing is we're doing four full days, and so we're adding Grace to the mix, um, and we're hopeful that, you know, that weekend, who knows? And we have one or two other surprises, by the way. I don't think we'll announce those in advance. But there'll be some other, you know, who knows who ends up playing with who, you know, some of it's planned, some of it's not. And that's what it works. And that's what I think why people love the Grateful Dead so much. Some nights it sucked. It didn't work. <laughs> yep. You know, it didn't be <laughs> but when it worked, yeah. but when it worked, I, mean, it was, I never really thought it totally yeah. sucked, but <laughs> when it worked, it was magic. And that's because they took those chances, right? And when you take those chances, and you go to a place that you don't know exactly where you're going. I mean, that's when it's best. It cannot mesh. You can get lost, and it can, kind of doesn't hit. But when it does hit, you know, that makes it, that's what everyone was going for every night, you know, for that moment. Yeah. Um, because you can tell when a band, even a great band, comes and plays the same set. Even when they're touring, you can kind of feel the vibe. And you know, these guys have probably been doing this set list every night mm-hmm. on this tour. Mm-hmm. And versus... Yeah. You know, when people are taking uh, uh, chances, and, and we're going to see some of that, uh, we hope. This whole Zach Brown string cheese, those guys didn't even know each other. Yeah. They never met. Um, but, you know, <laughs> so I hope it works. But um, the spirit of it should be that, that collaboration. And if, and if it works as well as we, in, in the traction we have, and what we sold, and kind of there seems to be a lot of people coming. We're excited for the, to do this every year, you know, that, that weekend after Labor Day. Yes, Zach Brown is one of those guys who has brought into the country world some of that communitarian connection with the fans that the jam band scene has. Like he does a thing he does to show if you you can pay like an extra amount for a ticket and you get invited to like a post show cookout with the band. And, it's and, actually called it's it's actually called an eat and greet. An eat and greet. <laughs> I like right. it. Yeah. So yeah. so you know, I, I think yeah. I think he learned that from the jam band scene. You know that kind of that kind of networking with the with the cool. his his people. So he ought to fit in with string cheese just not, just fine. I think. Where where um yeah where can we find more information about this festival? Uh, Interlockingfestival dot com. Uh, one other little thing we're going to let everyone know, just because we've got this kind of theme of one thing leads to another, and we built this icon that you can see on the website uh, that kind of shows the two stages and almost an infinity symbol. And people have loved that kind of locked-in kind of concept, one into another. That we're actually going to, we're going to, and we're going to do it now because we just feel the vibe, and, and we want to shorten it and tighten it and kind of come up with our own identity. So we're probably going to, we're going to trim things up and announce this that we're going to go to lock and, and the Lockin um, Music Festival, and that icon that people will see at our website, they've seen all around, and people have just really responded to it, and this whole concept is that it is a Lockin, and we're going to try and kind of build an icon that reflects this spirit of, you know, one band into another, seamless continuity, and just kind of we're all kind of you know, the goal is to see if we can make this kind of one long day of a long jam, you know, one into I, another. I don't know. So it's what about so maybe a, some sort of some sort of musical centipede? <laughs> exactly. Well, you'll see. If you've seen the Ike, we've kind of built this thing. It looks almost like a centipede. It could be. Yeah. And so we're going to actually, and we're going to do it now, because um, we're going to be the Lock-In Festival, and it's about being locked into one another. And uh, we're excited, but it's all at interlockinfestival.com. And it's coming Thank up you. at uh, September 5, 6, 7, 8. And uh, you guys are both invited. You're my guest. And I guess everyone else on this who's listening, I hope you'll be there. I probably can't put you all on the guest list, but <laughs> David and Gary. You know. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm making plans to get myself there, and uh, whether in a professional capacity or just as a fan. And I'm, I'm hoping to see you in a few weeks, Peter. Thanks for having me, guys. We appreciate it very much, your support. Very right. keep, happy. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Peter. Also, Best keep up the good work it. at the Capitol and, and the Brooklyn Bowl and all that. 
Okay, rock and roll, guys. All Thank right, you. Man. Thanks. Thanks for everything you do, Peter. Thank you. Yeah. All That's right. Peter Shapiro. Thank you for uh, getting him on the air there, Gary. My pleasure. Oops, hello. Let's hang up on that. And let's go back to the phones. You're listening to Tales from the Golden Road on the Grateful Dead channel. The number to call is 888-897-4748. My name is David Gans. I'm out here in Oakland, California, and I have Jeff Pearson with me of Further and the Fall Risk. Our, my co-host in New York City uh, is Gary Lambert, and our, your calls are what this show is basically all about. So let's go to Peter in Portland, Oregon. Hey, guys, uh, thanks for having me on. Great, great to thanks talk to you again. Uh, the last time I called was that space between the Dead Tour and when Further announced that they were a new band, and everybody was all buzzed, and I had to call in, and super excited about that. So a couple things to say. First, uh, I want to take a, a little issue or share some of my uh, experience as a kind of a local musician here in Portland for the last 25-plus years. And with someone asked Jeff about uh, uh, if Facebook makes it easier as a musician, and I think on the local level, to a degree, for me it does, because I've always been the kind of yeah. marketer for my, for my group, and all the times I spent in the middle of the night at Kinko's cutting and pasting posters, and I must have went through a dozen <laughs> yeah. hammer packers and walking around, and now I put a blast yeah. out to 300 of my Portland Facebook friends, and if I get a 10% return, I put 30 people in that bar there to see me. Yeah. And then the the, yeah. the local thing, so it, you know, so that really helps. Maybe not, maybe not, you know, in the making it big, but for guys like us who are just doing it, you know, we got jobs and kids and all that, and we're just doing it to to keep our fingers fresh and to have some fun. Yeah. So in, I totally agree respect, with you on that. Facebook works really yeah. well for me the same way. I've set up a ton of house concerts. You know, I'll I'll say I'm you know I'm going to be in the Northeast in this week, and I'm looking for a place to play on Tuesday or Wednesday, and I'll get I'll get uh, well, you know I, I almost instantly get an answer and get a place to play, and then line yeah. up people to play. So yeah, yeah. it's it, it well, it's Jeff, a wonderful adjunct to postering and stuff. Yeah. Well, Jeff, you came to you came to Portland with your partner a while back, a year maybe or so ago, and did four or five nights at one of the yeah. local McMenamins pubs here, and I, I only knew about that. Yeah, we did seven it nights enough. there. Yeah. Well, Jim lives there, right? Yeah, Jim, Jim, my yeah. partner from Boxset, um, he lives there, and he owns Mississippi Studios, so oh, that's, a, that's great a great place spot. to... Yeah. Yeah, yeah Jim, owns, Jim owns that place and the little restaurant next door, and... Yeah, um, really yeah. We did that. seven nights at uh, um, Al's Den, the acoustic room there at the Crystal yeah. Ballroom. Yeah, that's a great, that's a great spot. So, the, the yeah, I, I've played every call, place in Portland. I love it. Yeah, it's awesome. Well, the, the main reason for my call, and I tried to call during the days between, but I got way late, was to talk about the song "The Days Between" and how I believe that the evolution of it from, you know, the last days where the Grateful Dead were performing it, and how poignant it was, and and my last uh, Grateful Dead concert at the Portland Meadows in 1995, mm -hmm. uh, they played it, and it was, you know, uh, I remember that show. very poignant very poignant looking back and and I and quite honestly and I've suffered through a few versions with the dead and uh, and some various other things where it just didn't quite make it but boy I'll tell you what further has taken that song and turned it into what I think it's always meant to be and destined to be and it's a jaw dropper now and it's it's quite frankly my favorite Bob Weir song that's played and the how the it, dynamics it, uh, of the song start out so slow and quiet, and each verse yeah. and each section of each verse builds and builds, and the way uh, you know the keyboard switch from piano to the organ at the end, and it just I chill. I'm getting chills just talking about it, and I it, yeah, I, my hats off. Let me, can I make a recommendation? You should yeah, go please. look for in in May of 2011. Bobby did a thing with the Marin Symphony called ah. First Fusion. And if you can find, a, I'm sure there's a recording of it on the archive, and the performance of the Days Between from that is just stunning. This fellow named Giancarlo Aquilanti did charts mm -hmm. that the Marin wow. Symphony did. And Bobby, that was a highlight. It was a wonderful show, and that was a particularly deep highlight of that show. So you can find that. If you love that song and you love the latter-day version of it with Bobby singing it, Yeah. Go look Very at much that because so. it will it will knock you out. Yeah, yeah. And I, th I, w I will indeed. One thing I've noticed about yep. Bobby in the past couple of years, and I think especially since he opened TRI Studios, is he's really relishing opportunities to sing songs quietly and in a place where there's a lot of space around the notes. You know, he's he's getting more, and he doesn't have to say "shut the fuck up." Right. He's <laughs> he's, 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 he's really he, he's some of, some of his best vocal performances I think in recent years have been, have been at TRI and and. 
at those moments in further shows where where the 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 mania can come down and and yeah. and days between seems to be a place where he really well, really digs deep. The, the rise and fall is what really does it for me. And when people ask me, "What is it about the Grateful Dead that you know you like?" and how, how do you answer that question? And my mm-hmm. my pan answer now is the rise and fall. Mm-hmm. It's the tension and release. It's the up and the down. It's the it's the blow the roof off to hear a pin drop, and and you don't get that really. Yeah, anywhere it's, else it's it's and, it's dynamic once in the early days of the grateful dead uh, <laughs> jerry garcia said we've been experimenting a lot with dynamics we're working a lot on deafening right now <laughs> but, <laughs> l- 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 <laughs> but, but, but luckily they got over that you know? <laughs> and, and, hey, and listen, I, I just bought my room at uh, uh, uh maya down there so i'm headed down oh, my cool. wife and I are headed down in january we're super excited I had uh, already bought tickets for Jam Cruise, and then you guys announced that, jerks. <laughs> so now I'm, I have to do both. Okay. Work my way through work, but, you know, thankfully I got a little bit of flexibility there. But Wait, so you have to spend two weeks in the tropics this January know, instead of one? Poor fast week, baby. <laughs> I know. It's just terrible. Damn. So, well, and, well, I'll, uh, I'll tell I you what, here, man. Oh, if Yeah. If you see me, if you see me at one of the bars down there, come up and say hi, because that's probably you know, where I'll, I'll be when I'm we're gonna, not playing. I'm going to see you at Red Rock, because <laughs> I'm going to do a quick shout out to my friend Jeff, who's a contractor in Afghanistan, and he uh, he gets an R and R about every 130 days, and he plans it out so he and I can go on further tour. And oh, so wonderful. we've been doing Red Rocks the last three years in a row, and we've got a little uh, secret. I can't tell you; I have to kill you connection, but we have front row center tickets. <laughs> <laughs> so I oh, very wave cool, at you, Jeff. The first night, please do, man. Center and uh, and uh, and then we're doing uh, Red Rocks. Uh, Going to try to get up to Washington. Definitely Eugene. Although you know, all my Oregon friends are griping that there's only one day in Oregon this year, and I keep telling them, I said, "Look, we've been we've been blessed, you guys. <laughs> there's people around. Yeah, it's because to travel. For yeah, I think I, I think it's so we could do you know a couple nights in the in in the Bay Area this time. Well, and the Greek Theater, special place in my heart. My very first uh, California Grateful Dead concert was uh, Friday, the, uh, July 13th, 1984, with the Dark Star Encore. Uh, oh, yeah. And it, it was uh, unbelievable. So that place holds a special place in my heart, and I have not been back since the Grateful, since I last saw the Grateful Dead play there. So it's, we're going, we're doing that. We're doing Red Rocks, uh, maybe Washington, Eugene, for sure, and then we're doing that. We're heading down to the Bay for the Greek shows. And, Excellent. Call it good until January. So, hey, guys, thank you so much for taking my call. Thank you so much, Jeff, for making the music. And uh, I will definitely uh, look you up. My pleasure. Thanks for coming to the shows, buddy. You bet. All right. Thanks for calling. Bye. And we go now to Janet in D.C. Hello? Hello? Yes. Hello? Can you guys hear me? tapping the lines. Hi, Janet. Hi. Well... I really wanted to talk to that guy Peter Shapiro, but I guess you got him off the phone. Yeah, he just he was just uh, making a quick guest appearance. But uh, if you have any questions about interlocking, uh, maybe we can answer some of them a little bit. Okay, so you know we're not very far from there, right? Definitely closer than Marvin's Mountaintop, I'm guessing. Mm-hmm. From DC, about two and a half, three hours. Yeah, that's what I, that's what I think. So, so what are you guys comparing this to, size wise? All good. Vibes. What do you think it's going to be? I would guess a little larger than Vibes, given given the you know the popularity of the headliners and uh, and the four day thing. Uh, but I don't know what kind of capacity they're selling. So it looks like a pretty big area. There, there's a funny video on the Interlochen Festival site of Warren Haynes visiting the site, um, acting like he just happened to show up. Uh, a month early <laughs> and 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 just looking at the empty space where the stage is going to be and everything it looks like it looks like a pretty good sized space and it looks very beautiful yeah when i when we saw when they started announcing in the, what the beginning of summer and the early late spring i, I didn't really believe it was going to happen mm-hmm. i thought it was kind of a you know, make-believe thing and if they were going to sell tickets i mean do they ever do that where they announce a big festival and if they don't sell them tickets that it's kind of like oh it's not happening no, you know, it, no, it's not a Kickstarter deal. Yeah, no, plan, planning planning festivals takes a lot of forethought, and you know, dealing with the booking agents and dealing with getting the permits, and you know, there's a lot of planning that goes up in advance. Um, and you know, 
as soon as you saw names like Neil Young and further attached to it, you knew it was a, a going proposition. Yeah, because believe me, if they canceled it, they'd still have to pay all those people a lot of money. Yeah, they pay they they, <laughs> they pay the deposit right right up front. So uh, and they ain't getting that back. But yeah, when I saw Pete Shapiro and Dave Fry's name attached to it, I said, "Yeah, this is not a fly by night operation. These are some of the more creative and and uh, diligent people that I know of in the business." And as as Pete said, Dave Fry was the founder of the Horde Festival, which was a kind of a breakthrough tour for the jam band scene you know it, it helped put a lot of those bands on the map so i knew that yeah. I, I, they weren't messing around yeah, i was kind of surprised though that maybe last weekend or the weekend before some guy got on and he was saying how they had booked jerry garcia band at some gig and they were going to pay him 42 grand was at some school in, somewhere in california and i was like oh my god how much do they possibly pay these people and i guess it can't really be a hoax because no but we're just waiting for everyone to confirm on the on the ballot, you know, before. But anyway, so we got about 30 of us going, and I have this thing on my Facebook. It's called the Interlocking Interrogation. Uh-huh. And so all of us in our the Nova Dead had seen, I've, I've talked to you guys before, we're all wondering about all the details about getting down there and what's really going to happen every day that we bought a path to do something, then the next day they offered another path to do something else. Yeah. First well, we bought, you know, the camping with the car tickets, and then the next day they offered this, just the camping tickets, and now they're offering just over a couple feet, oh, now you can camp in the woods right, tickets right. for another 250 bucks. Yeah. And uh, so it's kind of like, what's going to happen when we get down there? Uh, you know, we're going to get to do what we think we are doing, and when's it all going to happen? How long are we going to have to wait to get down there? Well, so I was going to hammer uh, we, the guy with some details. We can't answer all the questions, but there is a very extensive uh, FAQ page uh, at the Interlock and uh, website. So that might answer some of those questions for you. Yeah, we looked at it. All right, cool. Well, I just uh, I guess I'll say hi to Jeff Pearson then. Yes. And you guys. Well, hello. And so sorry, well, I bet you weren't at the Peach, so you had the weekend off. Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't have the weekend off. I was playing with the fall risk out here. But, okay, right. Yeah. Great tune, but, great uh, tune. Oh, thank you so much. Check it out, fallrisk.com. We can, you can get the CD, CD there. Or... Is it fall risk or the fall risk? Sorry, did I not say it? It's thefallrisk.com. Yes. Get the CD there. Or we have a store on our Facebook band page, and or you know the Amazons and the iTunes. But it's it's better for us if you get it through our website. We make a couple more bucks Yay. off the CD, and that matters. It does. We always thank you for calling. You all the bucks. Okay. <laughs> oh, you know, you guys. believe me. <laughs> There, for for the far risk, there aren't as many bucks as you might think. So that, every little bit <laughs> we helps. We give all the bucks we can, man. Believe me, all every right. weekend we're thank paying you. bucks to somebody. Bless you. We, right. we thank love you. you for that. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank Thanks, you. Shannon. All right. Bye bye. All right. All right. And uh, Hillbilly in St. Thomas. Hello. Hello. You're on the Are air. You there. And Hillbilly. Uh, yeah, you got you got oh, to turn yeah. you got to turn your radio listen down. On the phone. <laughs> yeah, yes, sir. How are you, Dan? Okay, right. there it is. Hey, man, I love Jeff. Love you. I love what you guys have been doing. Um, this Thank is you, brother. Be a simple question. I know you guys are busy, and uh, and uh, it might seem silly to some people, but I was just wondering when you guys are done doing. Everything that you do, I know you're, you're busy the shows and talking to people, and you're just at home chilling by yourself, and you right. put maybe like a Jerry on. Do you still get that feeling every now and again that just the goosebumps and makes you cry because it just, you feel it. It's not about the shows yes. and all that. It's just that he meant it. Do you, do you still yes. get that? Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Yep. Three votes. Uh, three right. yeses. Yeah. Yeah. Right, especially thanks. especially when I put on like an, an old, because I still have tapes, you know. Yeah. But uh, oh, especially when yeah. I put on an, an old tape of uh, a show I was at in particular where I was yeah. particularly moved. Yeah. yeah. I'll, 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 my, my latest experience of that was watching the Sing Me Back Home from the Sunshine Daydream movie. Oh, yeah. I, I, Perfect moment. I met the, the, especially the last verse of that, that is as as emotionally touching uh, a Jerry Garcia vocal performance as I can think of offhand. It's just so 
incredibly beautiful and, yeah, and, I agree. and comes from such a deep place and yeah i mean jerry jerry probably uh fired up my tear ducts more often than than any singer mm-hmm. that ever lived except maybe billy holiday and that's yeah. saying something yeah. well, robert johnson kind of like uh, made me have that same feeling yeah. um back in the day but anyway john prine has the there. way to do that for oh, me john mm-hmm. prine mm-hmm. the king of bittersweet yeah. oh john yeah. amen yeah. Brilliant song, um, yeah. but you guys, uh, I just appreciate everything that you all do, and I'm glad that you're still true to everything. And God bless you. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you, Thank you so much, brother. Take care, man. Appreciate your call. And uh, Aaron in Dallas, how can we help you today? Hey, how are you guys doing? Very well. Hey, Aaron. Hey, you're on the air. Hey, excellent. Uh, I'm really excited to be on the air. It's the first time ever being on the air, and. Uh, my dad's a true deadhead. I'm, uh, I'm 22 years old, and I'm actually going to this interlocking festival. Good for you. So, here we go. A wise uh, decision, as Bill Graham once said. <laughs> I'm super ready. This Fogarty thing is is going to be uh, just great. Zans can't dance. I hope he plays that. And, uh, <laughs> I don't know if he's le- <laughs> he may he may be legally constrained from playing that. He can play Vans can't dance as he re-recorded it. <laughs> right. Well, I'm I'm super stoked. I'm just super excited, and uh, I wanted to say thank you guys for having the show, of course. And uh, I'm just getting into it, and I'm in for a long, strange trip as well myself. Good, you are indeed. Welcome aboard. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, uh, do you guys recommend anything? Recommend any uh, years I should look into? I mean, nineteen seventy four. Seventy-four. Well, pretty much anything from 1969 through 1974, and, and uh, 1976 is also an overlooked year. Uh, look for the Dick's Picks that has uh, excerpts from the shows the Dead played with The Who at the Oakland Stadium in October of 1976. Just read about that in Townsend's book a little bit. Yeah. yeah. And I'm... I'm, I'm uh, but really... I've, I've, slipped, uh, I've slipped back into uh, a kind of a 1970 groove recently. 70 was a very good year for me. Yeah, but uh, you know, just just uh, just hop from year to year, hop the decades, yeah. and and you'll discover little gems all over the place. Sure, that's the first time I'm seeing further um, widespread. Um, I'm I'm just in for a ride, and I'm going all the way out to this Virginia place. Actually, great. That's a that's a long way to travel from Dallas. Enjoy. Yeah, yeah. I've never been out there, and I hear it's a beautiful place too. So, yep. Well, enjoy. Thank you, guys. And, uh, thanks for calling. Here. All right. Take thanks. care. Right. See you soon. Billy in Boulder has questions for Jeff. Hey, how's it going? Billy, Billy in Boulder. Hey, Billy. How you That's doing, me. man? Billy in Boulder. I'm doing great. Um, so I've been to a lot of further shows, and I love to uh, you know, see your energy and everything, you and Sunshine. I was wondering like, how you got the gig. And yeah, good question. When you were kind of kind of out of, you know, before further, what did you do? And what were your influences? Well, before further, I played in a band called Box Set, you know, who um, we were around for 17 years. In fact, talking about the Horde tour earlier, Box Set did a Horde tour That's one right. year. Um, and we used to play the Wetlands, and, you know, I met Pete back in those days. Um, but I played in a band called Box Set, and um, there's a, a place in Mill Valley called the Sweetwater that, that Bobby uh, helped. Yeah, I've been to the, it, the but, old one, I guess. Right, I've I was just going to say, in the, in the old days, the old Sweetwater box set would play there quite a bit, and Bob would come in, um, oh, cool. and it was kind of his hangout. Not necessarily to see us, but to, right. to hang out at his, at his hangout. Um, there was a woman named Jeannie who owned it that he was very close with. Um, so, kind of between Bob seeing us, uh, box set uh, opened for Rat Dog on a tour, um, and then there was a, there's a gentleman named uh, uh, J.C. Flyer who uh, mm-hmm. used to write for Relics Magazine, who used to write up box set all the time, and he has since gone to work uh, uh, for further. And when, right. Zoe, when Zoe decided she didn't want to be in the band anymore, I got a call from JC. I got a call from JC. Um, box set was a very... We, harmonies were a big part of what box set did. We, we had a oh, lot cool. of harmonies. And so uh, I got a call from JC... Asking me, you know, what some of my favorite vocals were on some of the the box set CDs. So I told him, and I asked him, "I uh, do I even want to know why you're asking me these weird <laughs> questions?" And, uh, 
And JC laughed and said, no, no, you don't want to know. And I said, okay, fine. So a couple weeks went by, and, and then he called me up, and I, I guess kind of between uh, Bob remembering uh, box set and um, JC turning Phil on to some of my singing, uh, I got offered the gig. Cool. And, did you, uh, did you I, have to go through, I, like, a big rehearsal thing? or? You know, believe it or not, there were no rehearsals. Um, they uh-huh. basically threw... Th- they basically threw 300 songs at me and said, you have a month, good luck. <laughs> um, that sounds about right. No, that's awesome. the truth. And, yeah. you know what? and you know what? And, and this is brilliant. And this, this is one of the things I've learned from these guys because they've been doing it for so long. The last thing they want to do every time they get a new guy in the band is to go through a month of rehearsals, you know? So what they I, do is they go, they go through a process where they find somebody they know can handle it uh-huh. This is not to toot my this is not to toot my own horn, but they knew I could handle it. So right. they cool. threw stuff at me and said, you know, basically find a part <laughs> that's not being covered at the shows. Uh-huh. And I to be quite honest with you, my first shows with them, other than some rehearsal shows we did at what is now Terrapin Crossroads and it was called the Seafood Peddler then I think. Right. <laughs> um was Further Fest was my first shows. Oh, nice. And if you recall and if you recall I believe we did three three nights at that, and every set was a complete Grateful Dead album. Oh, right, oh, right, so right, right. I remember. At my threw you right into the threw deep me end. right into the deep end. So for the for those three shows, I had to learn ninety songs. <laughs> um, nice. I think it was like eighty-seven or ninety songs or something, including little-known hit songs like Blues for Allah. You know, so the, wow. these were. Yeah. The, so I, I had to learn all that stuff. So uh-huh. um, I was absolutely terrified, to be quite honest. Um, <laughs> but by the end of it, you know, I was fine. By the end of those three days, I was fine. I've never looked back. You know, you just you get comfortable with it. Um, once cool. you kind of see how it is on stage. And it's it's just been absolutely wonderful and one of the best rides of my life. Yeah, I think, Jeff, I, I, first, awesome. I, I first met you a few weeks after the Further Fest, I think one of your first East Coast shows, which was uh, yep. at the ballpark in Brooklyn. And, exactly. And it, it was like you'd been there forever. It was, I, I just said, I, I said, how are you doing, man? And you said, living the dream. <laughs> exactly, man. I mean, you know, how could I was, I was turning handsprings when I got offered the gig. Yeah. I mean, who wouldn't? You know, especially cool. going to so many, so many Grateful Dead shows. Um, mm-hmm. You talked about who was I influenced by. Certainly, the Grateful Dead. Mm-hmm. Um, I went to a lot of shows before box set got so busy that I couldn't anymore. Right. Um, but other other than that, um, I'm a big Springsteen fan. I'm a huge Pete Townsend and the Who fan. And nice. um, and this is one that always throws people a little bit. But I'm a huge Rush fan. <laughs> That oh, always guilty throws pleasures, right? I know. It <laughs> really awesome. is, and I know Ga- Gans likes to mock me relentlessly for liking Rush. But <laughs> on, the, on, on the other on the other hand, your singing maid and further named her child <laughs> Getty. <laughs> That's right, she did. Be- Sunshine That's and cool. I, and it's funny because I had I'd known Sunshine for years before before further got going. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it was funny. Uh, Sunshine and Sunshine's husband and I went to school from kindergarten on together. We were ah, always Rush really? fans. Yeah, nice. Well, I'll be in interlocking, That's... and I'm sure I'll hit you at Red Rocks also. No doubt, so, brother. Hey, David. Yeah. I hear you're playing a house party later. Is that correct? Today in Oakland, yes. Yes. Lindsay is is my bestest, bestest friend. I met her day one in college. Many oh, moons great. Ago. And we are still yeah, best friends. So you tell Billy. From Lindsay's Boulder, awesome. Give her a hug. Yeah, Jeff. I, time, I, I mean, they're just. I will. Thank you. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Well, have a great time. I appreciate and that. Thank, All right. Thanks for I taking know my I call. Will. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Take care, Billy. With us. Okay, bye. Yeah, that's Chef Jeff's wife, Lindsay. Yeah, absolutely. Is, uh, They're wonderful. Splendid character. They really are, both of them. And uh, Benji in Edison, uh, New Jersey, you're up. Hey, guys. How you doing today? Thanks for taking the call. Sure. Hey, Benji. So I, uh, I'm kind of what you call a new deadhead. I'm only 21 years old. I've only been introduced to the Grateful Dead uh, a couple of years now. But um, I actually got my first chance to see Further in Boston on this past tour. A few buddies of mine told me, you know, you've been listening to the Dead for so long. Like, how long is it going to be before you really go out and see them? So I said, all right, Boston's going to be the trip. We made the road trip up there, and it was probably the most mind-blowing concert I've ever been to. So, Jeff, for everything that you contributed, thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Benji. I'm glad you enjoyed it, man. 
Yeah, oh man, it was a party. It was just a party. And then uh afterwards I said, you know, how could I how could I stop? So I obviously I hit Bill and Friends those two nights at the Capitol Theater. And uh just hearing the dead music at the Capitol Theater was just something like to just not to be forgotten, you know. Yeah, those That's a magic place. Those walls know that music pretty well. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And I, I was actually fortunate enough afterwards to uh to meet Joe. Um and I said to Joe, I said, you know, how did how did you get the gig? I said, were you were you a deadhead growing up? Like, was was the Grateful Dead what inspired you? And he's like, well, don't tell anyone. I mean, I obviously am now. He's like, but, but uh, I didn't even listen to the <laughs> it's Grateful not a Dead secret. before. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I didn't even listen to them before. I uh, he's like, I only started drumming because I wanted to be in Kiss. <laughs> that's right. That's, he was a big that's Kiss exactly and, right. and a big Zeppelin guy. Yeah, yeah. he's like, yeah. I, you know, I've never seen a funkier drummer before in my life. And I think that's one of the things that that makes further really cool to me is that it has the people who are really steeped in Grateful Dead music, including two of the guys who invented it, but also guys who didn't owe that much to that tradition when they came into it. You know, Joe. I mean, Jeff started mm-hmm. with Rat Dog, but before before Rat Dog, Jeff had no no background in the Grateful Dead either, and so they bring something really fresh to it. You know, it is not yep. it is not the way any other Grateful Dead drummer or Grateful Dead influenced drummer would have played it, or any other Grateful Dead influenced keyboardist, and and it's had a real nice transformative effect on the music. Yeah, yeah and, Joey and uh, I make. And I, I'm sorry. I say Joey and I make jokes all the time because both of us had the same wall size kiss poster. <laughs> <when we were laughs> <kids. laughs> okay, if you you get you get you get Lesh and we're on on stage with the makeup one of these days, my friend, and I will give you a yeah, fine steak luck. dinner. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, I'm sure that I'm speaking, to, I'm obviously speaking to people that have uh, spent years more invested in this than I have, but there was something about John Kazasek that he just, the way he plays and the way he, the way he takes the jams to a new level, I think, at least from what I've been listening to, to the Grateful Dead recordings, is such a similar style. Obviously, it's not going to be like, you know, Jerry himself, but the style just brings you to that space you place. And, uh, and I think that that was so much better um, about having him with Phil and Friends then I mean, obviously Warren Haynes is, is a fantastic guitarist. But when he when he was playing the music, and correct me if I'm wrong, I just I got more of like a, a hard rock type of uh, soloing vibe off of him. And uh, having John Kay, with, especially with Further all the time, and getting to see him with Phil, um, I mean, it just it, I think it resembled more of like the Grateful Dead style, and I think it enhanced the experience. Yeah, you know, well, I mean, John is real aware of what part of Jerry is so integral to the music, you know, how, how lines that Jerry played became part of the composition itself. So he can honor that part and he can also bring something of himself to it. I like it when guitarists who really aren't grounded in the Jerry style do it too, because that just, that just shows you how, how the music can stand up to a lot of different interpretations. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there's, there's something, I think what got me really hooked on the dead was that there's something about it. Every song that's just, it's so happy, and it just no, 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 no matter what the mood is, no matter what your situation is, like you listen to that in any in any circumstance, and like the happiness of the music just overwhelms well, you. And tell that, I, I'm tell sure that to some friends of mine regarding know. Black Peter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, again, I'm I'm preaching to the choir here. But I just uh, <laughs> it's a good first first time talking to you guys, and uh, definitely your radio station is has been a huge part of uh, of my Grateful Dead. Uh, you know, adventures. So I thank you guys for that. Honor to Thank you it. for listening. And thanks for calling right. today. It's great to hear from of you. Of course. Take care. Hope to see you guys again soon, Jeff. Okay. Be Take well. care, buddy. Chad in Illinois, how can we help you today? Hey. I think you're Chad me. Yes. Yeah, David? you. David? Chad. Yeah. Yeah. How you been, buddy? I'm you're doing back well. in thank the you. Bay Area now that I've left, huh? <laughs> Well, it's nothing personal, man. I had to get home. It was my longest tour ever. And you and you had to you had to leave to make room for him. Yeah, well, I had to leave to make money. Come, to come on, I didn't put that much weight again. on. <laughs> yeah, right. four thousand miles later, I'm back in the mosh pit of the United States, Central Illinois. It's very depressing coming out of the Rocky Mountains and looking across at nothing but flat. <laughs> Yeah, I hear you. That's why I stay mm-hmm. west of the Rockies as much as possible. What can we do for you today? You. Hey, I was just calling to say hello and to talk to you and just say hi. Okay. Uh, 
Ask if anybody Hi. out there remembers singing Home on the Range at the Rosemont Horizon in Chicago. I do not. I wasn't there. Break. I, 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 I wasn't there either. But if, if there's anyone out there who did. Ask them to give you a call. All right. Just to see if, it, if there's anybody that old still out there listening <laughs> to the radio. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Anybody hey, saying, I'm doing it, so there's got to be others, you know? Sure, there must be. All right. Well, thanks for calling. Nice Welcome home. Nice talking to you. And Jeff, thank you. And Jeff, nice talking to you, too. And, you bet. Uh, Take care, bud. All right, bye. All right. Take care. Thanks for being with us. Addy, while you were on hold, Jeff answered your question. But that's okay, because we love talking to Addy. Hi, Addy. Hi, Addy. Now I have to think of another question, though. Oh, you can just... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that small. Addie, is, Addie, I, if you know, Addie is a I regular know. on the page, and she posts links to everything we're talking about. She is right there schlepping links. I'm pretty sure work. that Addie and I are Facebook friends. Oh, oh yes, positive. I know you Addie, are. Addie, yes. Is, Addie is a friend to all who know her and a dear friend of the show and a dear friend to our community. And uh, uh, unfortunately, and Addie, I, I thank you for alerting me to the fact that... Uh, that uh, Rat Dog was being streamed last night by, uh, was it Taper Rob? Was he the guy doing it? No, 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 uh, no. It was Z-Man. two other Z-Man. guys, Z-Man okay. and some other but guy. But any, anyway, I got distracted by family business and didn't get to hear it. But I will, I'm sure I'll come well, across I, I a recording of it. Well, I wanted to let you, uh, you know, I have to put you in there. Well, thank you so much. And I think that if you well, go to that link, you can listen to it now. Okay. Because they, they cool. usually store their shows. Okay, good. I'll have to All check right. that out. And Addie, before you go on, I want to thank you. You sent me home with a gift for my wife. To it said on the note, here's something for Rita to thank her for sharing you with us. Because I played a house concert. I played a house concert at Addie and Buddy's place at the beginning of this tour. It's so long ago now. I've had so many experiences and driven so many miles since then. But I have not forgotten what a wonderful time we had. And Rita. Once wanted me to thank you. You gave her a watch, and she loves watches, so it was a perfect, oh, isn't that great? very thoughtful. I wanted yeah, to give her so something. Thank you for I that. just couldn't decide what to send her. And you know, when you wear that watch, oh, it changes she colors. She's wearing to it right mood. now. <laughs> it changes colors to your mood. It says. She yes. says. Yes. Isn't that crazy? Content. Read it. Read it. It's here. Wait. Here. Here's it. Hi, Addie. Thanks. Hey, Rita. Me. I love it. I have a thing for watches. <laughs> Little did you know. <laughs> oh, no. I had no clue. That makes Great. it even better. Great. I'm so yeah, thrilled. Really Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Rita, oh, for Eddie. sharing your wonderful husband. He is one of a kind. That's all I can say. <laughs> I, yeah. didn't, I didn't know you were shareable. Well, I'm, apparently well, I am. That's cool. Well, you shared, America, you, be warned. You share Jordan with me, Jeff. and you know, it's just <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Uh, apparently, I'm one of those people that everybody, er, everybody's glad there's one of me, and everybody's glad there's only one of me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Addy, this is Jeff. Did, 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 did we meet at yes. the, the night on, on a we further tour where, where at John Kay's show? Yes. Yeah, exactly. And I thought so. I remember hug. that. You gave me a hug that it was like you were my old friend. And ever since you did that, I love you. You are the sweetest man. No, I'm sorry. Listen, when you come, when you meet somebody for the first time and you approach them and hug them like that, you know immediately that you're meeting someone that they, there's just not many of you in the world. You made me oh, feel Oh, thank you like, so much, sweetheart. You made me feel incredible. And I've told people this every time that I speak of you. You're an incredible man. And I, I was thrilled to meet you. And your voice is incredible. And I, the question I wanted to ask you, someone already asked, but what are your favorite tunes to sing with further? Ooh, you know. Good question. Those, I got to say, those change all the time. Um, it must, it must. There's so many of them. It, it really does. I suppose um, I'll always, I always go back to this one because it was always, they played it at my first show. And, you know, there's always that moment that Deadhead's talking about where, where you get it. You know, they, they use that phrase, like, either you get it or you don't. <laughs> and uh, I, I got it when they played Terrapin. Oh, mm-hmm. such a Oh, nice. And position. my very first show, you know, was a Mardi Gras show at Henry J. Kaiser, and they did Terrapin. And, you know, all the old expressions, my face melted, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> I got it. And so the first time, and I'll never forget, the first time I got to sing Terrapin, um, 
with the guys you know i just and every time since then that we do it it's wonderful and it's some we talked about black peter earlier i love singing that because the, the bridge of that oh, is yeah. so fun yeah. that yeah. the harmony parts that uh sunshine and i do with bob on that bridge are so fun to sing yeah and um i've got but, to say further has done some of the most beautiful full ensemble addicts of my life of any configuration oh yeah ever played this, I was, especially when you had elvis costello and larry and Teresa uh, in the mix as well wasn't that a City great Musical. night yes it was that was that was a great night but you know to to be quite honest addy i gotta say that just about everything <laughs> is is pretty thrilling um i just never thought i'd end up in this band and i feel blessed every time i'm on stage with them and we're lucky to have you well, thank you Wait, so much, darling. I your voices, that. your voices at Barclay Center were mm. uh, that show. I am getting chills just thinking that show was fabulous. I think that was the best show on the on your summer tour for uh, well for me because I was there obviously. <laughs> but listening to most of the other <laughs> right. shows, you were incredible. The, your voices were incredible. It was oh, a wow thank you moment. So much. All right, let me. Thank stop. you so much. Let me step. Uh, Gurgling all over you. <laughs> and, oh, no. uh, don't, stop. don't stop now. We it's love your gurgling. Exactly. <laughs> hey, well, Addie, check out, yeah. check, out, check out the Fall Risk album when you get a chance. Oh, too. she will. Yeah. Oh, I certainly will. I'm going to purchase it as soon as I can and, and play it for everyone, and then they'll purchase it. Right on. That's it's the a train reaction. reaction. Thank you so much, darling. I really appreciate you. And I thank, thank you, you Addie. Too. I hope to see you Talk again you soon. soon. Bye-bye, well, bye, everybody. Definitely. Love you, Addie. I have a hug waiting for you next time we see each other. <laughs> oh, I right. can't wait. Woo! Oops. <laughs> Damn it. I'm sorry. I did not mean to hang up on Addie. Um, the the uh, Cooperstown show was very cool. I liked <sighs> it so much. I'm playing the whole thing on the Grateful oh, Dead Hour. That but was so fun. What's the story on that Casey at the Bat? Who set that to music? Um, Phil did that. Nice. Oh, wow. Yeah, exactly. And it was brilliant. And it was absolutely brilliant. And that was a great day. I mean, that was a memorable day. When you... I. You know, so, so many great things that I never thought would happen, like going to the Baseball Hall of Fame number one mm -hmm. was a big deal for me because I'm a huge baseball fan, as, as Gary definitely knows. We've talked about it. But going there with Bob Weir <laughs> was <laughs> unbelievable. That man knows so many stories about the old ball players. Yeah. These oh, are yeah. these so many things Bob knows, you know, that just don't get discussed. Yeah. This is a very knowledgeable person. Mm -hmm. And he had some stories that really GMC made that business tour elite dealers fun. provide dedicated accounts. Some specialists. of the old Negro League players business that Bob choice knew about. Well, he's been working on a stage play about Satchel Page for about 20 years. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And learners. so there was New lots of stories delivery. around Satchel Page that I really can't repeat, but <laughs> it was a very entertaining trip. And then to have Phil put the KC at the bat to, to, to music and, and set it and to kind of throw that together at the last minute. And then I remember we did Gloria that night. Yeah. And Bob did. Bob always does his little rap in Gloria with the, the, the baseball, baseball sex rap. Yeah. Rap. yeah. <laughs> but he, this one was a little longer than usual and a little dirtier than usual. Yes, and it was. it was, we had a blast that day. That's it was great. a really fun. I'm I'm really I have to go back and listen through it again to make sure there aren't any words that I have to bleep in now. <laughs> well, it's, the sentiments are. I just good. remember a Lucidious. couple times. I mean, because obviously we have a lot of fun on stage, and I I just remember literally laughing out loud and trying to cover my mic. And when he said uh, she likes it low and inside, he said something. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> it was just you know I was, I was really on sorry. Third, that, and this yeah. boy needs to score. You I was know? sorry was I had so to miss Cooper's stand. Yeah, it really was. Oh man, that was a fun one, Gary. Yeah. yeah. Next time. I know we missed you. We missed you too, man. Believe me, you were in our thoughts that day. Well, let's go back to the phone, shall we? Ronnie in Salt Lake City. What's on your mind? Excuse me, one sec. Yeah, hi guys. Can you You're hear on. me? Okay. Yeah, we can. Yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, listen, I wanted to talk real quickly about uh, my first Ed show. Was at uh, Poplar Creek, a, a closed place now out of this, uh, Hoffman Estates, Illinois, in '83, and and then. Uh, it took me another year later before I finally saw my second show, which was Alpine 7-6 and 7-7-84, seven, seven, which I think are just fabulous shows. Now, maybe I'm a little biased because that was the era that I jumped in but uh, and boarded the bus, so to speak. But uh, I wanted to take that in relation to some of the Dick's Picks released and rumors that I've heard over the years about why 
uh, the Grateful Dead or whomever will not release a lot of shows from that era, 83, 84, 85, except I believe maybe 82 Alpine was released. Yeah. But, uh, what have you heard? Uh, I, w- I wanted your feedback on those shows, which are, I think are just over the top, both of them, uh, maybe minus the first set, seven, seven. But beyond that, um, I would love to see some, I think that would make a fabulous package and would love to at least see, uh, I'm sure like a lot of fans, more from 84 and 85. You know, it was always uh, the considerations for why to release a Dick's Picks or now a Dave's Picks or whatever. It was a combination of performance quality and recording quality. And sometimes uh, sometimes one trumped the other. It was like, you know, oh, they really played great, but the board tape was somehow deficient. Or there were, you know, there were just songs that got completely technologically wiped out or whatever. Uh, uh-huh. You know, and, and they weighed all those factors. And they also tried to distribute kind of evenly through the decades. Um, you know, what's what's the choice stuff from each decade? So if they've released a bunch of 80s stuff, then they might go back to the 70s. You know, it, there were all kinds of all kinds of things weighed and considered. And since maybe since they had released one Alpine show and actually we also have the uh, the videos of Alpine from uh, later in the 80s. That's uh, correct. Um, right. yeah. You know, it's it's uh, a lot of factors go into making those decisions. And everybody's got a favorite show that hasn't come out. And yeah. everybody's yeah. got a show that did come out that they think unworthy. <laughs> you know, so yeah. it's, it's, uh, it's a tough decision always. But, uh, you know, maybe, uh, maybe if a groundswell starts for Alpine 84, you never know. That's right. That's why I bring it up. Well, I'll stay tuned. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Now, before Take we go care. to the next call, uh, we have uh, Newt Mud Puppy on Facebook it said, I know the band is close, but you and Jeff Comenti seem really close. Do you share more than just names? <laughs> Seriously. How do you guys communicate which Jeff is the right Jeff when rehearsing and hanging out when somebody says, hey, Jeff? <laughs> well, every, uh, as you've probably noticed, most people in Further's names start with J. Um, so I'm JP. He's JC. J- and there's JK. JK and JR. Perfect. Okay. So there we go. Yeah, that's that's how we do it essentially. And yes, Jeff and I are close. There's um, only one Phil. There's only one Bobby. That's right. And only one Sunshine. Yeah. Only one woman. And right. um, a bunch of Jays. But Jeff and I actually live really close to each other, so we do have a tendency to uh, get together during off time. And um, so you do share more than just me. Sure. You share beer. Yeah, we do. <laughs> um, and we share a love of uh, food and uh, the Who. We went to see the Who. Uh, Thanks to Further, we got on the Who's guest list and we were able to go see the Who together, which was great. And we took our lovely ladies. You know who's a great connection to the Who? Who? Justin Kreutzberg. Yes, I know he does. Believe me, I've I've hit Justin up, uh, who's done some great films. And in fact, I've I'm getting copies of all those from. Nice. Right on. Listen, we have time for a couple more calls. If we're lucky, let us start with Adriana in California. Hey, David. Yes, how are you? Hi. You're on. Hey, Adriana. Hey, what's going on? You are right now on the air. Is this Thank the Adriana you. that I know? Adriana, you, is, this, is this the Adriana I know from the show last night? Yes, it is, and it was so incredible. So incredible. Thank you. <laughs> and you were at the Ashkenaz on Thursday, too, weren't you? Yes, she was. I was, and that was incredible, too. It's been a great week of music, great two weeks, on uh, like all of August. Yeah. Yep. Well, you're on the air. What can we do for you? Nothing. Just wanted to say hello and thank you. And I'm very excited for Interlocking and very appreciative of both of you. Thank you. Oh, thank thank you so much. And uh, you've been doing good work for Interlocking with your... uh, Apparently your chopped liver, Lambert. With uh, all the photos you've been putting up. You got us all Interlocking t-shirts the other day. Yeah, Yeah, thank thank you. you. Oh, our pleasure. I'm glad you're invited. I'm glad you're invited, David. That was neat. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't go, but yeah, that's really sweet of him to invite me. Aww. Well, I'm glad. That's okay. And I, thank you very I'm, much. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be on tour in Ohio, and I'd rather be playing gigs than going to somebody else's, wouldn't you? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. You can see yeah. the show or be the show. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> anyway, th- thanks for calling, and was... thanks for all your enthusiasm. You are a great booster of all of our music, and we love you for it. Absolutely. Thank you. You. Thanks, Have Adriana. And that's, that's probably about Take it. Take care. Right. Awesome. That, yeah, that's 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 okay. it. Bye, bye, honey. Yeah, we got to go. That's it. We're out of time. Jeff Pearson, always great to see you. Uh, Gary, always great to see you over the uh, inner yes. tube. Yes, Gary, I'll see you soon, buddy. Yeah, man. Thanks I'll, to I'll, everybody I hope, who hope called. to be in Virginia. Me too.
and uh, and our uh, a- excellent producer, uh, I mean uh, uh, engineer Justin Vitetta, keeps things going smoothly. Was he on phones today too? No, Christine Whalen was on the phones doing her usual oh. superb job. Okay, sorry about that, Christine. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. <laughs> Thank you. Get that Fall Risk album, everybody. Let's yes. see. That's my shameless plug. Hey, man. It's uh, thefallrisk.com. Well worth plugging. All right. I'm such a, I'm such a slut. <laughs> He's a, I'm such a it's slut. okay, man. That's and, what you're here for. That's and right. bye, Thanks, everybody. And bye to Jordan. <laughs> we'll talk to you next yeah. week. <laughs> bye, she Jordan. She says bye. <laughs> okay, bye, everybody. Take care. You've been listening to Tales from the Golden Road with your hosts, David Gans and Gary Lambert.